and 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 for me as well, it's, it's the start of the of the Christmas season uh, when it's finished. And and of course, uh, it's wonderful to see all the breeds at the summer fair. But this is really the business end of it. It's the fat stock show, and uh, as a, as a sort of fat stock farmer, for me that's that's the the, the best bit. It's the it's the important end of the. Show. Well, what do, you, what do you reckon is the purpose of the Winter Fair then? Well, the purpose of the Winter Fair is the shop window of the prime stock which we produce here in Wales. Uh, top, top quality uh, cattle and lambs will be on show here for over two days and obviously it's the business end of it and they will, we have prospective butchers to come to buy the top quality which we produce. Uh, at the end of the show. And there is very much an emphasis on, on, on the food chain, as it were, within the winter fair. I mean, uh, what's the phrase that they use? From the gate to the plate, I believe. Well, yes, of course. I mean, it's, it's all here to be seen. Uh, we, we cover everything on the show here, as we say, from the cattle and the sheep. It probably was the backbone of it, but also there's a lot of trade stands that come here, produce winter feeding equipment for, for us as farmers to buy, uh, all of the uh, products that are produced throughout the summer come here as well. So yeah, it is a real, real shop window of produce, probably a little bit more intense than, say, the summer fair, isn't it? Summer show. And, and there is an element of competing, Emma, but there's also that... Uh, that other element of socialising as well. Yes, definitely, and I think it's a little bit more of a relaxed time of year uh, for farmers. You know, not, not so much harvesting and things going on, so they come here and they're able to enjoy, and it's a, it, it, yeah, it's just a lovely fair. And if you're looking for a Christmas present or whatever, <laughs> I mean, there's plenty available here, isn't there? I've had a quick walk around uh, today now around some of the, the gift halls, and there's some really, really nice stuff, really great Welsh businesses producing really unique, quality uh, product so there, there, there really is something for everyone up here also then um, the on the crude side of it or the cruel side I should say perhaps then these animals are destined for slaughter a big percentage of them are we have a carcass competition here for people to come along and have a look at the carcasses which they actually see the live product and the dead product and this is what we're about and farmers come to learn well this is the product that's making the most money in the slaughterhouse because of the classification systems that we have within the in the abattoirs and it's there to be seen so but in young farmers come along and have a look at the prime stock which they want to produce to get to the top level and as I said it's all there to be seen and uh, mentioning that the uh, the younger farmers and Nia is actually talking to Teleri Field and who's a new member of our on-screen presentation team and uh, she is farming with her partner Ned in uh, the Beth Gellet area so she'll be wandering around the showground and uh, hopefully we'll be able to bring you the best of what's uh, on show here at Llanel with during the course of the last two days. Um, English language commentary is available on Sky Plus, Freeview and Virgin Media by pressing the red button. If you have a TiVo box or Sky Q box, then please access settings and use the audio selection option. Good morning to you all. Yes, I'll be here with our resident team of experts and we're looking forward for the next two days of this year's Winter Fair. Uh, and if you do have any problems at all accessing the English language commentary service, then please get in touch with S4C's viewers hotline. There's a great team there and they'll be more than willing to help you out. So there's the information if you uh, want to join us here on the uh, Red Button English Language Service. Now then, you've probably seen outside, it's nice and dry. We've had a lot of rain, obviously, uh, during the month of November. And there are still a few scattered showers uh, around. But uh, there will be plenty of sunshine. The temperature at its highest will be about 12 degrees centigrade, <clears throat> 9 degrees centigrade here in Chanel with if you're uh, thinking of visiting the showground during the course of the day. Later on this evening, the temperature will drop to about 1 degrees centigrade. Tomorrow, well, we can expect another clear, dry day. There'll be a few clouds above. But uh, all in all, the temperature highest, a bit lower than today, about 10 degrees centigrade, about 7 degrees centigrade here 
in San Elwedd, so that's good news. Well, the emphasis, as we mentioned earlier on at the Winter Fair, is on the food chain from producing the stock to uh, selling at the market place, and there'll be plenty of competing and selling during the course of the next two days. And, of course, uh, we do have uh, an opportunity for you to take part via our social media outlets. And to start with, well, we want to know what uh, you think will be the selling price at auction for the overall champion in the cattle section. Now then, do you think it'll be between two and a half thousand pounds to four thousand nine hundred ninety nine? Between five thousand and seven thousand four hundred ninety nine? Seven thousand five hundred pounds to nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine? or £10,000 and above. Don't forget, you can contact us on our social media outlets. Right, let's kick off proceedings and we'll join Emma and Gerald in the cattle ring. Thank you, Gareth. Yes, it's uh, lovely to be back uh, watching uh, the cattle classes and we're uh, joining uh, the pedigree Welsh black heifer. It's only fitting that we start with the Welsh black, isn't it, Gerald? Well, yes, it's very fitting. Yes, indeed. It's um, the first three classes that we actually feature in the show here are the native breeds and I've been um, sort of an advocate that all the native breeds will come to the fore. So I hope are we going to see for the first time in many, well, ever in the Winter Fair, will a native yes. breed come for, forward and take the supreme title but um, unfortunately they're up against some seriously seriously good competition from the continental breeds and continental crosses but anyway it is still a prestigious job to win in the native breed classes here in Absolutely. the Absolutely, yes, and uh, it's interesting you say that. They've got new classes this year for Aberdeen Angus and Shorthorn cattle as well. So it's nice that they're getting uh, a wider representation and more, obviously more being entered, isn't That's it? That's quite right, because yes. obviously the, the, the native breeds now are at a premium price in the local abattoir. Well, not local, in the general abattoir. So I think the native breed cattle societies are doing their bit for PR, for eating quality of, of the future of the cattle industry so uh, it's fitting that we start like you say with the native breed of Wales and uh, so we'll first look at the judge in the heifer section and he will be judging every heifer throughout the whole section uh, in the show in terms of continentals and, and pure natives and it's interesting uh, to note as well that uh, we've got the highest number of entries this year oh, um, uh, sorry uh, in, in the cattle section then there's a lot more heifer than steers entered, so the, the, the heifer classes will be a little more numerous uh, than, the, than the steers then. Yes, for a comment, uh, I don't know what is the reason, I don't know, and if you talk to a lot of the showmen that are out there, they probably, they'd come up, perhaps the heifers are, are, are um, maybe, maybe, showy. I was going to say, maybe the girls just turn out better ah, than the boys. Ah, <laughs> comment, yeah, perhaps so, yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, our heifers judge here is working hard is Mr Greg Willis. Kevin Mao Farm, Kevin Mao Lane, Monkswood. And Greg is following a tradition, realistically, then. He states that he is the third generation of Willis's to judge here at the Winter Fair, so he. Uh, He's got a bit to hold up, hasn't he? Yes, yes, a bit of no pressure from, no family pressure there, is there? <laughs> no, not a lot, no. But uh, no, they, um, he farms, uh, uh, Greg sells agricultural machinery, uh, being a beef and sheep farmer, a crop farmer and a butcher. He also sells beef cattle around 500 kilos. Bit of a check of all trades there. So today it's all about the cattle. Well, as we alluded to before then there is a lot more heifers in the show but obviously the classes remain the same number of classes because every heifer and steer competes for, for the same class, number of classes but numbers which he's going to have to deal with will be quite large. And once we get on to the uh, limousine sired section there yes, are several, the several sections. sections. Yes, yeah. yes, but they, do, they do split these sections up in weight which makes his uh, so you haven't got a 600 or 700 kilo heifer down against a 400 kilo heifer you know yes. so it, it does make his job a little bit easier to select a winner from each section then. the cattle in this section then range from 584 kilos to 606 so not a huge amount of weight difference in in, in these no certainly not 
So nice, nicely turned out. Clipped a little bit more than maybe the summer shows, these Welsh black cattle, just, get, just to show them off a bit more meaty, showing them in a different way. Uh, well, it's a, it's a, a prime stock show, isn't it? So yes. we, they are trying to emphasise the parts, the most valuable parts of the animal. That's what they're trying to show uh, off. And uh, the loin has become a uh, very expensive part, whereas perhaps the more excessive back ends of the, of the continental breeds, the black, but eating quality is the emphasis on the native breeds, and the yes, native absolutely. breeds are pushing it very hard. So I'm not sure if, he's, uh, if this is his uh, sort of a initial line-up, but uh, just in front of us on the screen there, we have the uh, heifer from Burnett and Lloyd, that's Isle du Bombay Sapphire. That's, uh, very fancy name on that effer. So I think he's got a fair bit of work left to do judging this little class. So uh, hopefully we'll come back for a result a little later on where we've joined the uh, Welsh Black Heifers again.
Welcome back to the uh, Railroad Showground on this, the first day of this year's Winter Fair, and we're heading straight to the Sheep Ring and uh, looking at Class 62, which is a pair of Hill Radnor lambs. Here's Emma and Gerald. Yes, thank you, uh, Gareth. Lovely to. Uh, See the, the sheep for the first time today, and yes, as you said, they're a pair of Hill Radnor lambs. So, um, lots of different sections here uh, at the Winter Fair. Starting off, we'll start off with the uh, uh, some breed sections, and then we have other sections as well, and it'll all come together later on. In, it's a bit it's a bit like the World Cup. You have your group games first, and then we'll head for the quarterfinals and the semi-finals. But very similar now to the cattle because we are any pure native yes. and hill and upland breeds. So uh, the Radnor is a native upland hill breed. And so we see the first look again at a judge that has travelled down from Merioned. Tawin and Mary Oned and uh, Guy Anthony Jones farms himself and keeps all sorts of mountain sheep and he farms with his son next door, keeps Welsh black cattle so he's remained in the traditional breed so perhaps the Radnes here will be a little bit alien to himself but he's designated that he wants meat. So well, there's a tremendous white pair at the, uh, that he's looking at here now uh, from Jill Evans, and it looks like he's tapping them uh, forward then. Uh, as we alluded to, though, in the cattle section, then uh, they do uh, segregate them in weights, but this guy here has got quite a significant weight of going from 74 kilos to 106 kilos combined weight, that is, all them. So we are looking at a pair of 37 kilos, and we're looking at a pair of 53s. So there is a significant difference for him to assess, but still, he has to decide what is underneath that well-trimmed yes. wool. Yeah, and, uh, so his, his job is quite a bit harder than, than, than the cattle judges, some, some might say, because um, a, a good trimmer can do a lot of... Uh, uh, hide well, a lot of faults. Hide a lot of faults, Exactly, yeah. with, with, with the sheep then. So as you can see there, he's handling across the back there, and uh, handling, there he is now checking, checking the width of the loin, but he also has to handle them for their finish. And by the finish, we mean the covering of fat uh, that the uh, animal has, because that is ultimately the most important thing. If they're not, if they're not fit, then, uh, then they're, not, they're not ready. And uh, getting that right is really difficult because you don't want them over fat either. Quite right. Um, the, the native breeds obviously would be renowned for going a little bit, say, fatter than yeah. the continental breeds because they're designed for muscle yes. and it is a job to put fat on muscle. But um, these fat, these native breeds then are, are, are bred to be fatter than in the start. Then so. So I'm not quite sure line now. up here. We have uh, seven pairs in this particular section, so not quite the larger section that we will see. But he is. We can see them three, two, nine there. That's uh, DCL and CJ Williams. So I'm not sure which end of the line we've got here now. Really, really good. good to see uh, the Hill Radners here. They're uh, increasing in numbers. We've seen a good lot of them in the in the summer show as well. So it's uh, nice to see that they're represented here at the Winter Fair as well. I do believe that the Radners were actually placed on the rare breeds. Oh, endangered list, yes. yes. Endangered list a while ago. And, uh, they, they, they suffered very badly yeah, yeah. during the um, foot and mouth time. And um, uh, the rare breeds trust is one of the things that they do try and do. Uh, they do a lot of work in. In, um, getting breeders around the country. So if there's something specific like that, where one area gets a real hit with uh, with a disaster like that, that these breeds don't lose out. So they, they have worked really hard on that, and it's good to see a breed coming back uh, in numbers. It's quite it's quite ironic then with the hill at Radnor. Well, you sort of we're in Radnor Shire, aren't we? Then? And you would have thought that a lot of Breckenshire around the area of Brecon was a lot of radness kept out many years ago and on the red sandstone soil around Brecon they did thrive and do very very well and I do see that IT da Davis or Dana Reglas is a Brecon person then so they are still holding then. I'm not sure if we're going to come to a, a winner just quite yet he's taking his time over these uh, seven pairs 
we'll be coming back to this one again so hopefully we'll be able to see which end of the lineup uh, is the top end Thank you, uh, Emma and Gerald. Um, don't forget, <clears throat> there are several different ways of uh, watching our broadcasts from uh, the Winter Fair. Between 10 and 4, we'll be uh, live with you here on S4C, and you can also watch on the website, which is s4c.com slash fireav. Right, we've uh, visited the cattle ring and the sheep ring. Now it's time to go to the horse ring, and it's a very good morning to Rachel Thomas. Uh, good morning, Gareth. Good to see you again. A uh, bit different weather today to July, where we had the heat wave, of course. Um, so we've come up to the horse ring for our first visit this morning. And um, we can see the tent in front of us there on the screen. Uh, fortunately, it's not windy today, so uh, it's a little bit quieter. Um, so we've got in front of us now Class 182, which are the Section A coat foals. Uh, good entry year of 28 coat foals. And I've been having a look through the catalogue, and we have got entries from literally all over the country. Um, I've had a quick scan, and we've got them as far as Suffolk, Cornwall, um, and also up as far as Yorkshire. Didn't see any addresses for Scotland, but uh, correct me if I'm wrong, they might be a Scottish entry. So it's really pleasing to see so many enters here this year. Um, for me, I don't think showing foals is a, <laughs> my cup of tea, to be honest. So <laughs> these people do really have... Um, my uh, respect to be out showing foals and preparing them in this weather, especially with the, the really bad sort of wet weather we've been having. Yes, it's been mild, but um, we'd appreciate some dry, frosty days, I'm sure. So uh, obviously keeping these ponies looking in, in tip-top condition is not, is not easy in this weather. And obviously these foals would be in anyway after being weaned, so getting them out, getting them some experience in the full shows. Arad uh, XL. Just another event for them to come to and experience uh, this Arad type of atmosphere at a young age. It's a, a feat in Arad itself. Lewis. But obviously handling these foals yeah, at this knows. age really pays off when they're older. Rebecca Parr. Karnai Snapdragon. Attractive, flashy little foal there with a lot of white, partial to white myself. So we've got our uh, smart uh, lady judge in the centre of the room there. Very colour coordinated in the black and white outfit. And this is Dr. Dora Wynne Jones Evans. And um, she's in the East Linstead. <laughs> Down um, so yeah, in the Trosmanith, Blind and Stunyog, and Dora, very, very connected with the Welsh Cymru, and Gwbod, and Unionbeth, with a tight Dora, and it's slim. Mother Carr, the founder of the stud, 35 years ago, and she has stated she still likes to see a pony with plenty of fire in their belly. So I think she'll be looking for quite an extravagant... Section. She is a practicing GP after minimal surgery in Barmouth. Well, and she's judged, in uh, all over the UK. Well, a very good trip, she good pass. Shows on the continent. And also, she's lucky enough to go over to Australia in 2019 and do some judging. Julia there. Williams. She's going to be she's looking for something that she'd like to go home. Dan very Dan correct, with full of character and good movement. Tolly never seen so her. So, I think, wildfire for me, no, we know from what 
was I'm not a Section 8 person myself. I know that when you're doing the summer show, uh, and and research, you get two types of A's. You get sort of old-fashioned, traditional type of A or of your original hill pony. And then you get the A's bred, possibly to make you mount an all in the drain of first You've got to go uh, Brian Wilson Spires exclusive. Um, slightly more extravagant movement. Sit a vida beard. Dora Jones Evans, bit of a Isidin Trouser Nave. Dora Jones Evans. And got sort of a and a guru. And we'll be going for that type of pony. So this is the initial walk around, so we'll come back for a full show. Welcome back. Well, we were in the cattle ring earlier on. Let's get back there now for the uh, Welsh Black Heifer uh, category. And here's Emma and Gerald again. Thank you very much, Gareth. Yes, uh, the judge, Mr. Greg Willis, has been busy by the looks of it while he's uh, uh, while we've been away, and uh, he's just heading up to collect the card there. And it looks like yes, it's that heifer we saw earlier from Burnett and Lloyd, uh, Ayr du Bombay Sapphire. Yeah, Mrs. Sally Lloyd there, that was our fellow commentator in the summer. 
period there is taking a red rosette, so she's on the other end of it today. <laughs> Lovely heifer there, and uh, I think a clear winner in her class today. She's nice, nice fleshed out animal. Good weight, 584 kilos. And, yes, uh, yes. Is that an indication that uh, perhaps that's uh, a target weight that they like this 550 to 650 bracket? So she's nigh on in the middle of it. Yeah. So we'll see how she fares later on against the overall heifer championship which he will come forward tomorrow I believe I, uh, another aspect of the winter fair I do enjoy is the, is the little names they give uh, the entries it's just a bit of fun isn't yeah, it that they have yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah so hopefully we'll see her again for the for the native championship you have fraud Dion Kimreg, a decreda ega stadlier fireia. Mahin Natalie Gaiz Brav and the Neavuid, I got to the heat. Well, this is our first visit to the uh, the food hall, and uh, Nia is uh, with Chris Roberts, quite a familiar face on uh, S4C with his own uh, cooking program. And uh, recently he uh, won a BAFTA, so congratulations, uh, Chris, for that. And um, I believe that uh, a bit later on he's going to be uh, cooking for us. And uh, he's obviously having a little wonder around the food hall looking for um, ingredients. And uh, Chris is uh, well known for promoting uh, Welsh produce and uh, well he, he, yes he's just mentioned the fact he's going to be cooking some lamb uh, later on uh, and uh, he's here looking for I ingredients he's looking for the, the cheaper cuts of the uh, the lamb the, the 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 shoulder the belly and as Nia just mentioned, obviously it's a, a difficult time at the moment with the cost of living crisis, so Chris can be quite inventive uh, in his uh, way of cooking and uh, looking for the, the cheaper cuts and how you could uh, use the cheaper cuts to uh, cook a, a healthy meal. And as uh, Nia's asking, we've got a lot to learn as to how to use all the different types of meat that's uh, available to us. And as Nia's saying, there's a, there's a, a nice feeling in the, in the food hall and... Uh, a lot of families coming up to the Winter Fair to visit, uh, including Chris, his, his family as well. And uh, obviously later on this evening, they'll be uh, watching the firework uh, display. So Chris's uh, children are three and a half and uh, a year old. And there's another one on the way as well. We'll see Chris later on. <laughs> Well, Nia was just mentioning the fact there that Chris is well known for his sexy rub, which he uses uh, uh, when he's cooking barbecues, and uh, no doubt we'll see some of Chris's sexy rub uh, later on. Now then, uh, we did uh, mention earlier on there's an opportunity for you to take part, and uh, we're asking you what you think would be the selling price at auction for the overall supreme champion in the cattle section. You can take part by visiting uh, the website, which is uh, s4c Cymru slash fire air. Well, closer to my equal more. Right, let's have our first visit to the pig ring. Thank you, Gareth. Yes, we're going to be uh, joining the pigs for the first time today. And uh, again, it's very different from the summer show where we, we are judging different breeds of pigs but uh, today w it's more of a from a butcher's angle of things and uh, uh, they are they are classed in in breeds as well but uh, sort of in, in more in weight uh, sections as well for the different um, types of pork, pork products that uh, the butcher uh, sells. Um, we so see then a butcher there Mr Alwyn Morgan then from over the road there in Bills so I'm sure he'll be keen interest and maybe he'll be a prospective purchaser later on 
perhaps. Let's hope so. So the first class we're joining today is for the uh, pair of cutter pigs, which is uh, in the weight section, 71 to 85 kilograms. So the cutter pigs then are heavier than your porkers, but not as large as your bacon pigs. And we see that, this has always uh, fascinated me, then we're all on, the, uh, very similar to the, like the horse judging, no hands-on and the pig judging, is it? It's all basically done with the eye. And, yeah. uh, and obviously then he can't get in his pens with these boisterous young animals, these pigs, and and uh, perhaps the judge would be knocked and bruised about if he yeah. if he did so. But uh, it, It's quite hard as well to um, judge the, the fatness of a pig by hand uh, uh, as well. And uh, it's very, it, yeah, it, 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 it is much harder, although you can feel it over their spine, but they don't give away as much as handling, say, a lamb, where you, you do feel... Uh, they're, that, they're very sorry, the animals. Yes, aren't they, they are, they are. Especially these uh, modern pigs and even like the native, breeds of pigs they've improved ever so much and uh, probably the problem it would be then uh, we, we see it in the summer shows and that they judge they're all running around the locomotion has yes. come into the pig industry yes. whereas it's not just pigs that just stand about and get fat are they the uh, locomotion is is a pride that they've got to walk about and can yes. and show themselves off correctly and i would judge here is a difficult job to be actually yes. to assess the, the locomotion of these within these pens but they can't let a pair out or they never control it's, them it's they? very difficult to uh, uh, uh to show show these uh, these pairs so it's and, uh, ass assessment thinking well, the, this animal is going to have such a very good carcass and that and that is yes. what he is the, uh, the judge there is Mr. Daniel Morris from Denby, uh, an experienced butcher uh, for some 20 years where he took over uh, the butchery business. And uh, last year he opened a second and uh, shop last year and his third this year, so he's very successful. You must be buying them cheap. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wonder whether he'll have an eye on taking something home to his well, shop I from would the, imagine he's from been the invited fair. here to judge and it's, it's, it's not a full-gone conclusion that judges will purchase but uh, they, they uh, surely will try to purchase the animals only because, uh, because what comes with these animals and especially the champions and first prize winners and that comes the rosettes and the rosettes are able to display in their shops and show that they are buying Absolutely. possibly the best product in the country aren't yes. they? So it's all a bit of PR. It looks as if we'll have to come back. Yes, quite, a, quite a difficult job there. Uh, judging the, the these pairs, and especially in the pairs competition, you need a pair to match. It's quite easy to turn up one good animal, but to have two that are matching is, is very difficult indeed. But hopefully we'll come back and see which pair takes the red rosette. <laughs> And, uh, from the pigs, then we go back to the uh, the, the pairs of lambs and the Hill Radna pair. And I'm just wondering if the judge there now is going off to get the red card for the winners. We're looking at shot there, number 327, Erin uh, Martin and Erin Stevens. I don't know, is that his decision? but... No, he seems to have hopped to now to the to this uh, pair that we we saw earlier. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not quite sure what this judge's method of no, a lot of judges is, to be off, to say be throw us about, don't they? And in oh, no, indeed, he's, he's he's taking moving that pair up. So maybe uh, he's taken them actually into Is that a second, second, second position, we would there? have thought. That's a fair old step up from... A lot of judges then judge from right to left or left to right as a uh, perspective, and this judge, it looks as if he's... Uh, made his decision perhaps that 327 there uh, would be a top end but as we are sitting here uh, Emma we are not hands on so we can't give no, our opinion we can only have the visual assessment and yes yes that's the, that is the uh, the crux of it isn't it is that these sheep then have, have to be handled there's a familiar face in the locality to me the Dylan father and son yes. in Gwynver in St Adog they sh they're showing an awful lot and support they show a lot, a lot of sheep, yes, they support a lot of shows and oh, yeah. Dylan has a very good catering business. Yeah, my nan, I've got a bit of difference in, like, there's a very small 
compact pair at the top there now. And for me now, it's the third pair that really sort of catches the eye because, but then maybe they've been trimmed up or fluffed up to to look a bit more powerful. Oh, oh we're swapping around decision. again. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Just to throw us off. Yeah. Now quite, quite hard to follow this uh, this judge. Maybe we'll get to know his methods by the end of the day. But I think I alluded to before, then there's a lot of weight difference in between a, a 53 kilo lamb and a 37 kilo lamb. So um, you would have thought perhaps that he would have tried to keep, say, the top three uh, in his class within a similar weight range. But uh, yes, it is his decision to. <coughs> Sunday's is in the competitor's eyes and not in the judge's eyes, or perhaps, well, <laughs> perhaps the competitor thinks that. Sunday's in his eyes, perhaps. Well, I can see, I can see him there scratching his head. <laughs> I think he's got a little bit of uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> thinking to do. Fair play, though, he is going over every pair quite diligently, which is uh, very... Oh, oh, hang on. So where are these now going to be? In third position, I think. That's okay. I'm just going to say we, we're on air until four o'clock. I'm wondering if uh, if maybe we'll uh, be still following this class by the end of it. <laughs> well, at this so moment, at this moment, number three two five is on the top. Uh, Martha Duggan, and they are 96 and a half combined weight, so they'd be 48 kilos live. Inter interesting to see the pair now then he's just brought into third then they're quite a bit more heavily trimmed aren't they Gerald yes they are yes, indeed they are very well trimmed to be fair Martha Duggan or Bowes and Savile Kenta Erin and Martin Stevens and this pair at the top end then have cut the tails short yes that's interesting when they were born then so yes. yeah no he's moving again he's <laughs> <laughs> oh, indeed. So, the, uh, so these ladies are going from second to third to fourth and back up to second. Well, fair dues. So they, that was the... The judge must have found Jill something Evans. that he didn't like. Yes. So he's finally uh, made the then, decision, yeah. We um, have a one, two, three. A date now. And the three, two, five has come to the floor. Martha Duggan. Number three, two, six. Is in second position is Jill Evans. Oh, look, Ems, six ladies. I was about list. to say, oh, I got to get in before you. Well, anyway, definitely. <laughs> well, congratulations. Wow. There was a lot of changes there last minute, wasn't there? Was, yes. Yeah, How was. were the news? Um, okay, when we were down there, I didn't have much hope, but yeah, we were all changed around a lot, so yeah. You had a bit of a nice surprise. Yes, it was. How did that feel? Yeah, good, really good, actually, yeah. We've had a bit of problems with trying to lead the one, so this year it's a little bit like we don't really want to be changed around. You didn't want to move lead, long, though, far. <laughs> but no, it was good, yeah. Well, really congratulations good. to you. you First red card of the show. Yes. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you. Well done. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah.
Adran and Merlin. Welcome back to the uh, Royal Welsh Showground here in San Elwe, the first day of this year's Winter Fair. It's great to have your company, and we're going to head straight away to the horse ring and join Rachel. Thanks, Gareth. So we're back up to the horse ring for the Saturday Coltful, for those of you that are just joining us. So, um, total and Last year we were down to 480. Obviously, people possibly didn't really put mares in foal in 2020, so they would have been down on the young stock in 21. But good to see that numbers have come back up and they are approaching the numbers we had in 2018. So uh, quite good there to see as um, some of the shows this year haven't been that well supported, which is well, quite sad. But possibly but, um, things are starting to pick up. Adora and and Kelly obviously, Kelly people, I think, maybe are choosing their shows at the minute. Um, mm. Choosing mm. judges, mm. choosing... Well, mm. well, 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 and this foal is by Sarum Red Knight and out of Sarum Rippling Rose, the dam there uh, being a Royal Welsh winner. And second, we can see 1128, and this is Ryan Wilson. Uh, this is a Friars Pony, Friars Exclusive. Well uh, by Friars for you and I well a uh, huge congratulations Adam a nice class to win the first uh, one of the morning oh unbelievable unbelievable pressure class this is good colt yeah, all Fisher the way down today. so, so uh, yeah, you got the Welsh uh, National Pole winner down there and you got Ryan here with the Friars one but uh, unbelievable yeah as I mentioned earlier Mr Williams Greenlands and Shoreland people have come from all over the UK as far down as Cornwall and as high up as Yorkshire just scanning through the catalogue. So we there it. are um, so it's fair to say huge you crackers off to show numbers of ponies geographic, oh, geographically so placed all over the UK, uh, which is good to see that they will travel to Bill, even in the middle of winter. It's just lovely for him to get something that can win here. But it's great that he's got a dab to show them as well. Thank you very much. I'm getting too old now. He needs <laughs> <are> younger legs. <laughs> well done. Thank you very much. Thank you. So uh, 1125 there, uh, we can just see in view, and this is Julian Williams's Tolly Never Say Never uh, in third place, and this is by Come Here Wildfire and Out of Hope Nugget. Um, and the first pony here, um, not shown so far this year, but out of a Royal Welsh winning mare. And, uh, right, let's go quickly now we're to the pig over for to the the pig ring. And there we go, the uh, winners there. Um, Mr. Daniel Morris has come to his decision. Yeah, and that's uh, Davis and Sons there, 920 and 919, a pair of Welsh pigs in the uh, cutter section. So a pair of pigs, 71 to 85 kilos. Don't forget that we're all over uh, social media, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And don't forget the uh, email address or the uh, website address, rather, s4c.cymru slash fireia. Right, let's head straight back to the cattle ring, is Emma and Gerald again. Yeah, we're back in the cattle section on the first uh, visit to the Continental Breeds of 2022 Winter Fair. It's the pedigree 
limousine heifer section. The, the limousines, of course, have done very well here at the Winter Fair over the last few years. We would say they're the dangerous breed, perhaps, shall we? Or the, on the competition. Oh, do, yeah. dominant oh, dom- breed. Dominant no, yeah, breed. dominant breed. Yeah, fair comment. Do you want to give them a bad, bad no. reputation? Worse than no, no, have. indeed. No. So, of course, we, as you uh, said before, Gerald, we've got the same judge in, in for this class again. He will be judging all the heifers, like you said, uh, Mr. Greg Willis. And uh, some very, very nicely turned out uh, heifers in this pedigree limousine class. Standing on the top of the line there at the moment is Suzanne Lewis. And showing on behalf of Colin Harris, Mr. Colin Harris, and we have the Edwards brothers from North Wales there standing in second position at the moment. A little bit of interest in history. Miss Style Regina for the Edwards brothers was second in the Agri in the Agri Po show this year and became overall reserve pedigree champion in the Winter Fair. So we'll have to see what Mr. Willis wants to follow that, or does he think that the uh, heifer in first place at the moment, Annie Lewis, is better? Um, that, uh, we'll have to see. Regina Heifer that you mentioned, she is the heaviest heifer in this class, coming in at 644 kilos. Live weight then, so a bit of a bit more of a variation here in yes, in, in, in weight. Then they're going from 562 all the way up to her then, who's uh, 644 kilos. Uh, it doesn't look an actually big heifer for that weight, so she no. must be very fit. Very then, solid. Yes. So he's pulled the Evans brothers forward into that position at the moment, but we'll have to wait until Mr. Willis is very thorough and. Examine every animal yes, I was with the say, same respect. Say, uh, as we mentioned with the sheep as well, and we do see a lot more handling of the animals uh, in the judging at the Winter Fair, which is, of course, because they're judged on, on, on a different criteria to the animals at the summer show. It's, it's not about how they look and how they represent their breed, but it's um, how they're going to turn out. With the jackets off. With the jackets off, yes. That's a very polite way of putting but it. Well, I've been rehearsing that. <laughs> <laughs> No, but uh, Mr. Willis's job is to actually assess what is underneath. Absolutely. There are certain parts of the animal that you can indicate that how actual fat the animal is, and uh, he'll be catching them then just in front of the back leg there, and there's a good indicating point there that how much actual fat is on the animal and around the tail there. Yep. If it's uh, um, fat around the tail area, there's a general sign that the animal will be very fat. And then brisket then round in front of the animal then down on the brisket is another point of where the animal will be and, and just where he's putting his yes, hand on the there now yes, rib yes. Cage covering, yeah. yes as we alluded to the continental animals then are very muscular or more muscular I will say than the native breeds and therefore yes. they will not quite ha- carry the same amount of cover on the rib cage. No, and, and in the brisket as well, isn't it? Yes, yes. Very thorough judge here. Does he know we've got a long day ahead? Okay, we'll have to come back and have a look at I think so, he's taking his time. Well, as we can see, Nia is still in the, the food hall and she's visiting the South Carnarvon Creamery's stall. And this is, uh, well, she's talking to Kirsty Jones, who is the marketing manager for South Carnarvon Creameries. And obviously, uh, Kirsty is just saying that uh, they're glad to have the opportunity to uh, visit the uh, Winter Fair so that they can show the produce that they have available. And it's very important for them as a company to uh, come to the, uh, w- uh, the Winter Fair uh, it, it means that we're at the right venue to sell our produce to the people who visit here. And as a company, we're constantly developing. They have a, a new range here at the uh, Winter Fair, and of course, uh, they can get the reaction from the, the customer and they can come here and taste the produce. And he is just mentioning 
the fact that, I mean, to the eye, the packaging looks modern, looks fresh. And all of the cheese that they produce from this particular range is matured underground in the Llanfair Caverns. So the uh, it's, it's well the temperature is is low and it's a natural temperature so they don't have to pay for refrigeration at all and obviously that's good for the environment. So Nias just asked for how long does the cheese go underground? The cheddar goes for about six months. The uh, the vintage Welsh cheddar that is, but the vintage. Welsh Red Leicester would go underground for about three months because that uh, particular cheese would mature far quickly. The Welsh cheddar and leek is uh, quite a strong cheese. And the, uh, the Welsh cheddar with penderin is another new cheese that they have on display here at the fair. And Kirsty's just saying that they uh, spend a lot of time in the office uh, tasting different types of combination to see what works. <laughs> Quite a pleasant job to have. Now, the chutneys you see on the top shelf, uh, the, uh, the plum uh, chutney, the spiced plum chutney would go ideally with the uh, vintage Welsh cheddar because the, the cheddar, of course, is quite creamy and uh, the spices within the chutney brings out the flavour. And the sun-dried tomato and garlic uh, chutney would go ideally with the, uh, with the red Leicester. It had more of, a, more of a nutty taste to it. The cheddar and leek being a strong uh, cheese, um, which would need then a, a strong chutney to go with it, hence the reason they've chosen the piccalilli. And with the, uh, the cheddar and penderin, they've chosen more of a sugary type of uh, uh, chutney, uh, a sweeter type of chutney, which is the uh, beetroot and orange. And of course, if they're all packaged there together, and people... Everyone's tightening their pockets, so they need to... Well, as Kirsty said, everybody's tightening their pockets, as it were, financially, so there's something available here on the on the stall, on the well South Carnarvon Creamery stall, for everybody. And as usual, Nia wouldn't leave any stall without, without having a taster.
Welcome back to uh, the Royal Welsh Showground. We're heading straight for the sheep ring, so let's rejoin Emma and Gerald. Thank you, Gareth. Yes, uh, we're moving along with the uh, sheep classes here in the Winter Fair and uh, change of class and a change of breed, Gerald. Yes, uh, still in the native upland breed, but we're in the Breck Knock Hill Chivet Lambs. Yeah, well breed which uh, we keep and ourselves as you, so it's quite interesting for me to see. Supposedly the best in the <laughs> in the business here in the in the winter fair. Um, Good number of pairs in this class yes, as well, is, which is nice to, to see, isn't it? Yeah, and a lot of representation from our local area. But again, uh, our judge then um, has a lot of work to do in terms of... Uh, I see the pair here at the heaviest pair would be 48 and a halves and down to 35 and a half. So, you know, such a significant uh, size of carcass to, yes. to compete. And... The the this has always bugged me slightly in this uh, lamb class is that um, as we sell a lot of lambs dead ourselves, then uh, 22 kilos is the cut-off point. So a lot of these lambs here today yeah. will be dying well over 22 kilos and probably will be come to the four of the prizes. So yeah. I find that find that quite ironic that uh, yeah. we are governed at that sort of price level and that we see these lambs getting up to this particular weight. But then again... But, but, but do we see this sort of as a... Is it a butcher's competition? Would a butcher have a different eye? Or are we sort of going it as a representation of what the, the, the majority of the market has to has to to fill in because it's because yeah it's quite hard because like we, like the stock judging competition is called a butcher's lamb or butcher's beef class and yeah it's a, yeah it's perhaps quite I'm hard, perhaps isn't it? I'm alluding to the uh, we 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 are governed by like the supermarket saying that they they f- have to buy the lamb to fit the packaging well uh, well they price it isn't it to 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 fit the to packaging suit them, yes, isn't it exactly, and then then if you don't fill in with fit in with that criteria you yeah. you you lose out don't you so it's, but then yeah, again, it's, it's, go back to the butcher then, and the butcher can purchase these lambs. Well, obviously, the bigger the lamb he gets, the more meat he more gets. he's got to sell. So it's less per kilo when he's when he's buying it in the start. So yes. let's hope that... Yeah. So it's a butcher. It's a, it's a prime stock show. I suppose we should forget what we are governed, basically, here. It's, it's the then, best animals that are on, on yes, show. Yes, 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 yes. But like I say, then in this particular class, then there's lambs in here at, th- at 35 and a half kilo live weight to 50 odd kilos. So this judge yes. is a lot to assess it's quite in terms of the maturity yeah. and size of these yeah. lambs. Yeah. Yeah. The size of the joints in which he's actually yes. looking at. Like, yes, it? yes, it's quite, quite a difference, isn't it? Some sweet pears. It seems to have gone for like some smaller pears here with... Quite I would think a lot of these lambs will be castrated uh, weather lambs and they yeah. will have picked then uh, the fleshy and nicer type of lamb to come here because some of these chivet lambs can grow into excessive excessive size Very lambs. strong, yeah. are they? Yeah. Very strong sheep, yeah. The Dylan family there again. <laughs> yes, back out. Back out back again, again. Then, yeah. yeah. I don't actually know with this particular judge where they are actually lying no, at the I, moment. No, I, I don't want to put myself out there to say which end is first or anything, uh, Gerald, because uh, no. no. he might well switch to it around again. Make that. He has to go. He has to show every particular pair of animals the the same utmost respect and, and handle Absol- and assess them. So that it's, it's the final lineup that matters. So we'll yes. just have to wait to see where he draws his actual particular uh, first. He's scratching the he- his head again <laughs> as well. <laughs> I, I'm not surprised. Very strong number. Oh, in this class. Fair dues, so, uh, yes. yeah, good uh, representation for the breed. Oh, it's great to see to come up here and just see the number of animals, like top top animals, turning up for the show. It's uh, well worth a visit, and 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 so nice to go around seeing them up here. Well, we think just at the moment, then number three three O is It Davis from Dana Regulus here in Brecon, then uh, are standing at the top. But as we say, we're not quite too sure. I think we'll have to come back to this one, Gerald. So we'll see how much uh, swapping around he'll have done while we're away. Yeah. Well, then Emma and Hilchamoch, I'm again a company kicked Proviatal Yawn, he'll be done. Well, there's no peace for the wicked. We're going to go back to Gerald and Emma because we're returning to the pig ring. And, uh, 
saying no. Yes, so we're... Uh, yes, I alluded to before, we're in the pig room, we're a pr- prospective butcher we're talking to. <laughs> there, like, isn't it? You know, a, a prospective buyer, I should say, oh, the yeah. butcher. Yeah. Then, uh, yeah. Definitely. And, oh, we're going straight to the red cart here. So this is class... Uh, 143, which is the cutter weight, which we saw the pairs earlier. So this is for the uh, uh, single animal, and that's uh, number 903. Um, uh, 902, well, uh, yeah, so that's... There we go. Uh, RCM and DBM Davis. For that, for that. <coughs> So, um, these similar to the sheep, then they're in different sections of breeding. So these pig, um, cutaway pigs are under uh, the purebred modern pigs, and that was actually a Welsh pig which uh, took this uh, class then. So again, it's unfair they'll... and the handlers here then to be moving these sheep, or moving these pigs around is quite difficult. So yeah. to leave them there for the judge to assess. And, uh, she has a good entry of pigs here today. Very good entry of pigs as well, and uh, we'll see some different breeds as we go along, and some cross breeds of pigs as well, which is always interesting uh, with the fat stock show. Yeah, of course, brilliant. Man, say snug. English commentary is available on this program depending on your device. Either press the red button or use the audio selection option. Any problems, contact the S4C viewers hotline and the details are on the screen. S for the and other fire area, the bow. Well, man, I get from our. We're back in the cattle ring again and back to the conclusion of the pedigree limousine heifer show. Sire class then. And we have the Edwards brothers standing in first position at the moment, but Mr. Willis is well within his right and to turn him around, if he so wishes. That's a Miss Style Regina. She has uh, quite an array of prizes, as we alluded to before, already on the mantelpiece at home, or in the cabinet, we should say. Tim <laughs> Huare. So a heifer born on the 18th of December 2020, so just coming up to the uh, two-year-old mark. And as we said, she's 644 kilos. As I stated earlier on, then uh, the target weight a lot of these butchers have in mind, probably from 550 to 650 kilos. So she falls within that and a nice stylish heifer. So she, if, if she does come to the fore, then she will be probably quite a dangerous character in the final lineup tomorrow. I'd have thought so. The, the, the limousines, but also the heifers have featured quite heavily oh, in show winners we, here over the years. Yes, they? they have, yes, indeed, yeah. But as we state, tomorrow we will see the heifer judge and the steer judge will combine. And, and will they agree? Now well, that's, that's, the, that's the important that's question, the, isn't it? Yeah, fair comment. But, uh, so I don't know, will the heifer judge will push for his heifer? Or will the steer judge push for his steer from his particular classes? But we'll have to wait and see that tomorrow. And uh, You've got to get through the l- sections to get it, be able to get into tomorrow. So there'll be a lot of very excited or a few excited people tonight and a few... Quite a few disappointed, but that's the way it goes. And but to get a rosette here in the in the winter fair is no mean achievement, anyway, isn't it? To be fair, so absolutely not. It's interesting to see as well the um, how they turn the animals out differently for the winter fair, isn't it? With the, yes, uh, compared to the summer show, with the clipping of the face and the back, then so, so making the sp- head look small to make the body look bigger and the back look a bit wider. Yeah, yeah. You farmer. <laughs> You've got these tricks, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what? Presentation. Yeah, That's absolutely. what it's about. Yes, yes. Work hard, every handler. These animals are handling exceptionally quiet, and so a lot of time and effort has been put into these to uh, come into a ring here with thousands of people as we are just full up at the moment, but it will be full. Looking on and the noises and all the different surrounding 
clashes and whatever go on, these handlers work very, very hard to present these animals quietly and correctly. He's bringing them really tight and close he is together, actually, there, isn't yes, he? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it looks as if he's made his decision. He's walking over to tell the stewards. And it is number six, the Evan Edwards brothers. Miss Style Regina. So a good start to this show for them. And they're coming off a successful show in the Agri Expo. So they'll hope perhaps then they'll go one section further because they were reserved there. I don't know who's a champion of there up there here, but we will find out. So we'll come back to see Regina probably tomorrow. Emily, I'm a trotty problem? Well, welcome back to the uh, our coverage of the Winter Fair, and uh, we're heading straight to the food hall. And Nia uh, is uh, at the Kowain section of the uh, food hall. Kowain being a government-funded project for Welsh food and drink producers, working with businesses that are focused on the 
future growth, and one of those companies is Vale Vineyard uh, from Cluid. And uh, yeah, it's talking to Gwen, and uh, they decided about five years ago that uh, there was a, a microclimate uh, in the area where they lived and uh, they wanted to find a crop that would make the best of the uh, land that was available to them and uh, hence the reason they decided to establish a, uh, a vineyard and uh, that was done back in uh, 2019. We saw the potential so we decided to uh, take a risk as it were uh, and this is the uh, the first time the first opportunity as it as it were to to sell their produce since establishing the vineyard back in 2019 but there are several different types of vineyards and uh, different types of crops and grapes mature at different times of the year. And after planting the vineyard, um, obviously there was a lot of work involved during the three-year period after planting the vineyard, but they started off with uh, a rosy to start with, and they've uh, won an award for that, which was the uh, annual... Uh, competition winner in 2022 for the best still white wine and rosé and we also did uh, very well with the the red and it seems to be quite popular and uh, Gwen is just saying that they've had a lot of help from uh, uh, mentor and business and and co-wine as well going through the process when we started and uh, the marketing a aspect as well the branding and the logo in itself was something that we worked on the uh, with uh, hand in hand as it were with, with co-wine so don't you help can company made with zeal and we also had uh, Help from a company called Made with Seal. We're based in Wrexham. And we're also trying to encourage people to recycle the the bottles uh, that we use. And he has just mentioning the fact that um, Gwen is a a familiar face because back in 2008 she was the uh, lady ambassador for for Cluid. On, yes, is it possible to have a taster? Yes, you can start with the white. Well, I, I think one would be enough. And uh, good health and uh, just uh, wishing uh, the Vale Vineyard all the best with their produce in the future. So, a scam, a scam. It's quite a light, a very fruity, medium-bodied white wine. Yeah. Right from the food hall, back to the sheep ring. And it looks like uh, after a bit of uh, jigging about, uh, we have some winners, although they're still jigging about, and I can't quite see who the winner is. There we are, number 330. Looks like he's carrying the red card, which is IT Davis and Son. Dana Reglois in Brecon. One uh, of the heaviest lambs in the class as well. Staunch show people in, uh, within the sh sheep industry. Yeah, there's a lot to keep, uh, keep uh, an eye on today. So uh, You've got 17 pairs, somebody yeah, said. 17 pairs, yeah. Why did you do it? I don't know. I, you think and how? I'd, you think I'd have grown up with it by now. <laughs> But, well, you uh, love it, don't you? It is, yeah. It is a bit of a bug, and uh, I enjoy this as much as the summer shows really like. And uh, you know, you meet people that you don't see from year to year, and uh, it's a different, di different atmosphere, I find anyway. So, um, but there, yeah, it's on to the next class now, and we'll see if we can continue. Seventeen pairs, and is this the first one in the class? 
Second. Second. Yeah, we had a fourth in the Radnor class. So. Fourth and a first, yeah. not bad. Well, I'm averaging out now. Keep it going. I'm Keep it out. going. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, don't forget, you can uh, show, uh, you can follow the Winter Show on uh, S4C's website, and it's also available on S Pedwarek Click. Just visit the website, which is s4c.com slash fireev. Well, it's been a while, but we'll return now to the horse ring, and it's Rachel Thomas again. Thanks, Gareth. So we're back up... Um, with the section and, uh, A's again, and this time we're on the Philly Fold class. Um, a record, well, not a record, but 40 entries in this. Uh, one of the largest classes of the show. Um, Standing so up good the top to see that we've got a, a neighbour of mine. Some big entries uh, from Kamar then. No, from Gwynve and Tengarog, yes. All right. Well, yeah, Nant Forthog stud. Nant Forthog, um, Blue Vanity, this phony. And this is at the, at the top at the moment. Tracy, Tracy Jones, Jones, is it? Yes, yes. Uh, husband John is there somewhere, I'm sure. Is keen. They've done very, very well. A nice uh, flock of mountain ponies out on the hill on the Black Mountains there. So do they do they farm as well? Yes, indeed, yeah. They've got a beef and sheep farm, yes. Ah, uh, right, and then they run the ponies out um, on John's the hill. father actually was a, was a staunch mountain breeder, and uh, I didn't think John, but Tracy is a very keen horse person, and they've revived the stud and kept the same bloodlines going, and they've done very, very well, to be fair to them. And to come on the top at the moment of this particular class is quite an achievement for them for a small family farm. Yeah, I've, I've, I'm familiar, I'm, as I said, I'm not a section A person, but obviously uh, doing the shows here, you get to know the prefixes, and I've, I've the Nant Fothog prefix, I've, I'm familiar with that. So they must have won a fair bit. Yes, to be fair, in recent years, they like I say, uh, John's wife, Tracy, then... Uh, has rekindled the, the sort of the fire within the breed, and they've done very well. And uh, I see they sell quite a few ponies abroad, and that they have done. So yeah, they've had quite a bit of success, and I'm sure. And the, if they are successful here now in this particular class, it'll do them the world of good. Looks like they are. And there we are. Congratulations to them. Yeah, just doing it. Just rather than sending them back out, she's done a swap with second and third. Um, Dora Wynne Jones, the judge today. For anyone who wasn't here. Earlier, it was only just switched on, maybe, um, from Trous <coughs> Um We'll be looking for a very typey pony, um, well-known breeder, Section A's. Uh, herself with the Islin ponies. Tracy Jones got a Nance Farhog. To be fair, then, and Farhog starts come on the top, and as you've alluded to, it's a very strong class. Yeah, but one of the biggest classes, one of the biggest entries, 40, and obviously we can't quite see with the camera angle how many turned up, but it looked, it, obviously, from where they're standing, is pretty full. So we've got 1152 there in second place. And that was uh, Lewis Morgan's Tim Gwynden fairy tale. Um, this is going to be in Welsh now, as well as it's going to be English. We'll turn it. It's in the hands of the God, really, isn't it? Well, you, you, you've had a great deal of success with the Blue family. Yeah. And this is another filly from that production. Yeah. Line. Yeah. Same breeding again. So we've, you know, they've done really well for us. So we you know, when the the the, um, the granny of it is, um, well, she's. Um, 23 this time, so we hope she'll have her last foal this time. And then, oh, lovely. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. It was a nice class to win that, so well done. Oh, Congratulations. Thank you. Thank Diane. You. Thank you. So, they're just a nice word with Tracy there. Um, homebred pony by Centennial Ramos. Tracy Jones and Ennis Gripolis, Nance Parfog, Blue Vanity. You can see this pony coming out. And a saddle in later years. Nice quality and a, ni a nice front on this pony for me. So we're going back to the uh, pig class now. They're really moving on uh, with their classes uh, here today. Yes, they're just saying about how quickly uh, the uh, judge is working. And he uh, obviously knows what he wants uh, in his pig. And uh, we've moved on now then to class 145, uh, which is a single bacon pig. So moving up in the weight sections. So these are pigs uh, weighing between 86 and 100. 
105 kilos each. And uh, these are uh, the modern pig breeds. And I can't quite see uh, the winner number there. And it looks like uh, it's one of the uh, Welsh pigs that has uh, taken this class once again. The uh, Welsh. Hey, Davis. And sons. The uh, Welsh pigs then. A lot of entries in uh, in these uh, modern classes today. The Petrin has become a bit of a, a yes, feature in the show then uh, yes. in recent times we've seen, haven't we? And that's a continental breed, isn't it? It is, and a lot a lot of commercial breeders, small scale commercial breeders, will will use it as a as a sire on 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 their sows, and it's a, really it's it's a French breed of pig, and it's a kind of the uh, Belgian blue of the pig world, as if as yes. if they say. And we'll uh, leave it at the continental of the pig world, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> well, with the, the, the bit of shape though they are, they yes, are they, they, renowned they, for their they, shape. They are a, a more double muscled uh, in, in the pig world then. But as we alluded to before, there's a good representation for pigs here in the, in the show. And, uh, um, Absolutely, because if you think of it, uh, what meats people eat every day, a, a pork is a big one, especially bacon as well, you know, more so maybe than uh, lamb well, for, for some people. If you yes, think indeed, in certain parts of the world, pigs are very, very strong yeah, exactly. and dominant, aren't but they? Then you know? it's, a, it's a bit harder showing with them with restrictions. They're on a 21-day standstill still, I think, compared to other animals. Yeah, yeah. And moving them about isn't always as easy as we've seen <laughs> no. here in some classes. <laughs>
Welcome back. It's uh, been a busy morning here at the Winter Fair, and it's been busy in the cattle ring, and that's where we're heading now. Here's uh, Emma and Gerald. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Gareth, and yes, and uh, quite exciting to join this class, Gerald, because it's a, a new class here at the Winter Fair, and that is the Pedigree Beef Short Horn Heifer. Yes, uh, short ones uh, have become, is obviously a native breed and uh, they have been recognised now as just the same as their counterparts in Aberdeen's Blacks and uh, Herefords and that to uh, qualify for a premium yes. at, on the other end of their lives and uh, yes, they've been recognised in numbers, obviously it started small here in the winter fair but obviously less hope than that they will increase yes. as the years go on. I, I hope so, there's definitely more of them if, if, if anybody who goes to the markets uh, uh, will see that uh, there's definitely a lot more of them coming through the through the markets, and there does seem to be demand for them, which is which is great to see. They've made a, a quite a resurgence in the uh, suckler cow yeah. um, breed now. So some dairy men have used short horn bulls, yes, and uh, therefore producing the half bred short horn females, and to put a terminal sire, whatever your choice is, back on whether you want to go three quarter bed or, or whatever. But these are they're nice animals. They are. They are. They were a dominant breed many many. Years ago, oh, absolutely before the Continentals came in, yes. But as you said, the the the, the use in the dairy industry, then easy calving, but then also the the uh, demand for the for the calves. Quality of meat again, isn't it? It's Eat, inter- eating quality, I should say. Then, yes. interesting. It's the, the first time we've seen the uh, the Christmas uh, sparkle on on the cattle. I don't, I don't think, I don't think I've seen a glittering short horn before. <laughs> no, fair enough. <laughs> well, we do. Uh, we feature them in the show, and uh, it always um, sort of amused me then that we've seen white ones and yes, strawberry yes, ones yes. and solid red ones and that. So um, we have one, obviously, wrong one in yeah. this, and two quite solid, but there is a fleck of white within them then. Yeah. Looks a very fit heifer, that does, to be fair, then. Yeah. A lot of meat on that heifer. I do like the roan cattle. They're very eye-catching, yes. the, uh, the breeds, then. Yeah. Um, so she's number 16, which is the heifer of Tim Bodley, and she's Glebedale Primrose. And... Uh, March 21 born. You were into your selection of names before. Well, there's some quite classy names in this. Gupworthy Ribbon. She's uh, coming in. I'm sorry, I'm just going back to Glebedale Primrose. They're coming in at 689 kilos. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lump of meat. Gupworthy Ribbon. Very heavy animal. And uh, yes, indeed, as you say, we've got the other two then a Gup with the Ribbon and Cowford, Cowford Flossy Robin. Actually, <laughs> actually then, um, on the uh, technical side of it, these heifers and the three heifers are on display are born in 21 and born yeah. in March and April. They yeah. have exceptional weight gain. They are for the age, because the, the, the Limousin heifer we were looking at right earlier, she, she was 20, but she was coming up to two year old then. Yes, so indeed. the so growth these in these, that's impressive, isn't it? It for is very breed? impressive, yes. to be fair. Yes, impressive. Oh, and that's what we should look at as farmers, because obviously the last time that you have them on your, hand, on your hands, well, the less cost it is to keep them. Absolutely. And then the current situation of prices of feed and that, yeah, they have to go. Yep. They have to go. It doesn't become economical to keep them. So. No. Nope. And if they can make it, make it off grass or as yeah, well, much off grass better. as possible, that's even better. Even better. Even better. Yeah. And there we go, the uh, pretty roan heifer then. Is she? Com- is that the uh, top end? Well, he's selected him in. I'm sure he's going to handle each and individual one the same as he has been diligent on. Yes, on he was every animal. Every so to be fair, so far, this yes. is the business end of it when he gets to assess what he's actually looking at. <laughs> We see then uh, the shape of the animal and what we've just seen in the limousines and that isn't quite as excessive muscle in, but no. But as you mentioned before, finish on them. Finish on them is, yes, is, is. is very good. Yes, indeed. But also qu- quite strong in the loin as well. They are very strong in the loin. Yes, yes, yes. yes. more renowned for that than than, and the, than the back, the back end. end. Yes, yes, indeed. Yes. yes. And then we have mm. the uh, sparkly heifer there as well. A power of heifer. Interesting to see. Well, hopefully we will feature the auction then tomorrow afternoon and. I'm quite confident to say that some of these perhaps won't go to the business end. They might be retained as breeding efforts. Well, Nia now is with uh, 
the Royal Welsh Society's new chief executive, Aled Rees Jones. This being his first major event, as it were. And uh, he's uh, obviously glad to see so many people visiting the showground. And of course, that the weather has uh, has been good so far. And yes, just ask him how much responsibility do you have uh, prior to a winter phase as well. I'm dependent on the team that's around me and of course the the army of volunteers and the stewards in the uh, rings they they know what's needed and i'm there just to give them uh, a certain degree of support as it were and he is just asking what is uh, the difference between the winter fair and the summer fair uh, and uh, the winter fair, according to Alan, this is to many people the beginning of their preparations for for the Christmas period, and for a lot of uh, people who come here, obviously they want to uh, show the stock, they want uh, the businesses want to show the produce that they have, and of course the highlight would be the the sale and the auction, and that uh, has a certain degree of theatre uh, around it in itself, and that's going to be the highlight tomorrow. And he has just saying that uh, we've been asking you, the viewers, uh, what your opinion would be as to what the price is likely to be at the auction. And as, as Alex said, we just don't know uh, how it's going to go. But as far as the butchers are concerned, uh, they want to uh, market and promote uh, the best produce that we have available. Sonny is just asking what 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 do you think would be will be the the, the headlines uh, over the course of the next two days, and Al is just saying that uh, what he's uh, glad about is the fact that there there'll be over a thousand school children visiting. Uh, the showground in the course of the next two days because this is the one of the only major events that's held by the Royal Welsh Society that uh, happens during during the school term as it were so uh, we want to share the story of how, how uh, the, the, the how we produce the stock and how we then go ahead to market everything and that's quite an important thing I think just asking as well, uh, some people have, uh, have maybe suggested that uh, the uh, the winter fair might be better off uh, happening over a weekend. But uh, as Alad saying, well, if it's not broken, why fix it? Um, uh, it does. Everything seems to work perfectly as it is, and of course, later on this evening, um, the showground will be open until quite late in the evening, so there's an opportunity for people to come here. And I was just asking as well how Alec felt this morning when he when he woke up, and uh, he was apprehensive, of course, a bit nervous, worrying about how things were going to work as far as the traffic and the parking were concerned, but everything seems to be working fine, and and uh, the weather as well is in our favour. Right, let's head back to the sheep ring. Thank you, Gareth. Yes, uh, joining another class here in the sheep ring. Again, uh, good entries once again. So we're joining uh, the, do you believe, the North Country Triviat lambs, the park type? Yes, uh, we come a, a breed that um, several exhibitors in this part of the world have tried, or several breeders, I should say, in this part of the world, trying to increase the strength of their Welsh sheep, but obviously... Uh, the uh, harsh conditions that we've got of grazing here in Wales, they don't quite suit everybody. No, no. Uh, but they're a very strong breed and probably the strongest and well made or better made of all the breeds of Chiviet. But obviously then the, the size of the years and strength of the sheep, like I say, will not survive on every condition around here. But no, still no. they're a good breed, they're a good carcass breed. Yeah, very very, very square, aren't they? And, and quite strong boned as well, aren't they? Yes, indeed. And, and to be honest with you, we're up in now very heavy. Then we've got a pair of lambs in here at 56 kilos live. Wow. So they're big sheep. Uh, big, big is, sheep, yes, you know, indeed. Yes. Uh, plenty of them are in that 47 to, to 50 kilo bracket. Uh, so the judge here will be handling 
larger animals now than what he has prior to his pure native uh, yes. hill and upland breeds then. So yes. And the Egan Million Arath are Ben Bedanin Dry Dross. So he seems to have sort of three rows going on here. Yeah. I think I think uh, uh, Actually the ring isn't very big to be honest no, for no. the judge and of course obviously there's a lot of other judging going on as well at the same time here so space is not of of uh, Maximum space provided, perhaps, and uh, no. And there's nine pairs out there. When we say there's nine entries, fair, yeah, yeah. there's two of each. There's, that's 18 sheep in the class, then. That's right. 18 yeah. handlers. Quite right. Quite right. So at oh, the gonna... moment, there now we can try and just, just catch the number. <laughs> nice lineup of sheep there, then, and the we have alluded to before in the trimming in this particular pair that are Smart standing at the top end here at this particular moment are very, very well turned out. That's from, uh, and we are talking pairs, aren't we? Yes, that is that is the the uh, important thing, isn't it? It's uh, not just getting one good animal, you no. have to have a pair. They've got to match, haven't they? That's right, and we see different types of trimming. We see the pair standing in second position, position at the moment then, not quite trimmed as hard. No, we can see them. Some have trimmed tails. This one has got half a trimmed tail, so there's a bit of a poodle look going on there. <laughs> a poodle look. <laughs> yeah. I, I think if you're going to trim, trim the whole thing <laughs> rather than... <laughs> oh, I'm just em emphasising that it's got a good tail. That's what it is. Go good half a tail. <laughs> 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 oh, dear, dear. <laughs> we'll be, hey, you and I will be commentating on the dog shortly. <laughs> we'll be in the dog. Green will be. <laughs> Crufts will be going to. <laughs> Poodle tail. Strong pair now going up to second uh, place there. Nicely turned out. And it's, uh, Interesting though, this judge, particular judge, we featured him quite a few times now, then he has emphasized solely, solely on the line of the, of the lamb, yeah, doesn't he? Yeah, he hasn't uh, been up too much. I haven't seen him actually feeling the tail or feeling or the like the leg. Or no, that. no. no but, uh, or the look, I'm not saying he's wrong for any man, and all judges have their different styles. And so now, now, now we've got more, more swapping about. It's like the well, hokey cokey there. Well, the there you go, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shake it all about. He certainly keep us good. Uh, keep us in suspense, he, he but he's is, kept the competitors, I'm sure. There, hearts are bouncing and racing. Well, and he had previously. He had uh, Bevan and Thomas in first and second, but he's just split them now. And in second place, we've got Daniel German. Then. With his uh, poodle pair. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. I wonder, I wonder where we're going to see him scratching his head again in a second. <laughs> I, <know> it <laughs> yeah. I don't think we're just going to get to a result to him again on this particular card. <laughs> that doesn't we, surprise me, We might Gerald. have to just come back and see what decision he did make. And, uh, and uh, in what position they'll be. Mm. Oh, I think you he heard this now. He's feeling the legs now for the first time, yeah. Yeah, he's got to come to the right decision at the end. Anyway, from the sheep ring to the cattle ring, Emma and Gerald again. Thank you, Gareth, yes. And uh, not too much uh, moving about in, in this class then. And it's that pretty roan heifer that has taken it. Glebedale Primrose coming in at 689 kilos. And uh, Tim Bodley, 689 kilo heifer. Then in the in the in the ring in the native breed, we won't see many heavier animals in the continental steer section. And nothing will they? No. 689 no. kilos. There's a lorry load of meat on that particular animal. There is animal. absolutely. And uh, but she carries it well. Very nice heifer. Mm. They stated earlier it'll be interesting to see if she does end up going for meat or whether there yeah. is perspective because Possibly. like the the breed is as we say is increasing mm. and they are pedigree animals yes. so there's nothing wrong with them going on to be a foundation animal of any herd, are they? She's a large heifer standing up to that gentleman's shoulder there, isn't she? Yeah, Indeed, she's, yeah. she's, she's smart. Growth, Very rate, nice. growth rate is exceptional. Yes, for the age. So we'll come back tomorrow and see her. Glebedale Primrose in the final.
Arif Hart. Kathy, Arasuk Dani. Well, quite shortly, we'll be leaving you for the news headlines. But before we do so, let's head over quickly to the horse ring and join Rachel. Thanks, Gareth. So we're back up now with the uh, Yearling Colts in the Section A's. Uh, 11 entries in this one. Obviously, um, Yearling Colts are often the smaller of the classes. All very similar stamps of pony here. And currently, at the top of the minute, we have got 1174. This pony belonging to Sam Morsley. Uh, Ilar Denver. Uh, this pony's come down from Buckinghamshire. So, again, a uh, well travelled pony. Crescendo. So we're having a bit of a swap around. And uh, I think I think lots of people turning up and entering to at the Winter Fair purely because they like the atmosphere. It's the last full show before Christmas. Um, It'll be a fair time now before any of these in-hand ponies come out next year. Obviously, the riddens, we do have winter showing, but after Christmas, there isn't as much for the in-hands. So it's a sort of end of season wind down for them and come, stay. I think this is going to be in English. I'll give you a chance to chat, listen to it. Owen, two, two ponies, he's bred, and he's come to the Winter Fair with two a bit, bit, bit of a special story because this is this is Denver, who was a full brother. Full brother to last year's Supreme, Dakota. Dakota. Yes. So, is this a good omen? <sighs> this is good enough for me at the moment. Whatever else comes is a bonus, but I am thrilled for Owen. Well, he looks fabulous. Well Thank done. You Congratulations. Very much. Thank you. So there we are, Ella Denver, uh, Yulin section, a cult winner. With Sam Morsley coming all the way down from Buckinghamshire and the pony being bred by um, Owen Griffiths. Thanks, Rachel. Well, so we'll uh, come back to see those in the championship. Thanks, Rachel. Well, uh, as Emma was saying earlier on, there was a bit of a hokey cokey going on in the <laughs> sheep ring. Let's see. Yes, we have a result. Yes, and it looks like he's uh, stuck to how it was when we last left. And uh, the winner's there, number 349, Thomas and Bevan. Um, taking the first. And I'm not sure they were in third when we left. I'm not sure who, uh, uh, who is now then. But 345 taking second, Daniel German. 46 and a half kilos. Prime weight to reach that. Yeah. 21, 22. Nice, nice pair of lambs. Nice, nice, nice pair of lambs. I, th I think the top three there now are very nicely. Yeah, to be fair, to be fair, with his hokey cokey, yeah. as Gareth still alluded to, then he's he's uh, ended up looks with us with the right type of result. Pardon? How special is it to win this fair? Oh, very, very special it is. Yeah. How many years have you been competing? Since 2016. We won it back there with a pair of lambs and we've been knocking on the door ever since and until now it was. So, no, over the moon, really. And you come to the show on the fair. You're, yes. you're here every year if I play. Yes, well, as we only live half an hour away, it's one of our local shows, so we try to support the local shows in every way we can. Will there be a bit of celebrating tonight? <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm sure. <laughs> well done, you. Thank you. Thank you. A wedding, a study, a scores such a yard, get our fair yard. Well, a good to see what you might make. Oh, I'm oh, in the grit. Yeah. Great, good, good. Power and a piece. Uh, Rainier just having a uh, word with the judge there. Asking how he's feeling and uh, just saying just saying what he's looking for and he's looking that they're even. So he's saying that they might look smart, but they might not be solid and, and, and underneath then. 
Said he's very happy with this class. Well, And this is what he does every day. Uh, does in his everyday work. Every day, take every day as your last day. Enjoy life. Well, we're approaching midday, and as I said earlier on, we will be leaving uh, the showground here at Llanel with uh, for the news headlines. But before we do so, let's just have a quick weather update. It's been dry here, of course, but elsewhere in Wales there have been a few showers. Some of them quite heavy, but later on this later on this afternoon, those showers will become a bit more isolated. About 11 degrees centigrade, the highest temperature, about 8 or 9 here in uh, Llanelwe. Well, later on tonight, um, it will be a dry night, uh, albeit uh, quite cold, 1 degree centigrade in the uh, Llanelwe area. Tomorrow, well, we're looking uh, at uh, another dry day here in uh, the Llanelwe region. Region. It'll be clear, but uh, the temperatures, well, ranging from between 10 in the west uh, to about 6 degrees centigrade uh, in mid Wales. So two dry days ahead of us, which is uh, very good news for anybody who's thinking of uh, travelling here to Llanel with and visiting uh, the winter. Uh, and of course, we will be broadcasting live uh, from the showground uh, until four o'clock uh, this afternoon and from 10 o'clock tomorrow morning as well. And there's plenty to see if you are thinking of coming here. Well, this is the beginning of Christmas. And as I said, we're going to leave you for the time being for the news headlines, but we'll be back very soon. Mae'n da ma tri o bobl wedi cael eu harestio ar ôl dod o hyd i gyrff dau fapi mewn tu ym Hennebont ar Ogwr. Cafodd y gwasanaeth y brys eu galw i'r safle ar stad Wild Mill ychydig cyn wyth o'r gloch nos adorn, lle cafodd 2017 a 2017 oed ac un dynes naw ar hugen oed eu harestio ar amheuaeth o geli gan y digaeth plentyn. 
Dywedodd arweinydd cyngor Penebon Tarogwr, Hugh David, fod yr achos yn un trasig. Mae heddlu De Cymru yn parhau efo'i ymchwiliadau. Mae'r awdurdodau yn Tsieina yn ceisio taweli protestiadau yn erbyn y cyfyngiadau Covid yno. Yn Shanghai, mae'r heddlu wedi gosod rhwystre ar hyd un o'r priffyrdd ac mae nifer o bobl wedi cael eu harestio. Mae maint y gwrthysiadau yn ddigon sail yn ystod arweinyddiaeth Xi Jinping, gyda rhai yn galw bellach arno i ymddiswyddo. Mae penawdau cyson ynglyn â methiannau'r gwasanaeth iechyd yng Ngogledd Cymru yn tan seilio hyder cleifion yn i weidio ysbrydol ysbryd staff ac yn gweithygu problemau recrywtio sydd eisoes yn ddifrifol yn ôl un o benaethiaid bwrdd iechyd prifysgol Betsy Cydwaladr. Ond yn ôl cyfarwyddwr meddygol y bwrdd, Dr Nick Leons, mae'r mwyafrif o gleifion yn derbyn gofal da ac effeithiol. Fe enillodd y nyrs Mara Jones Owen wobr gan y bwrdd iechyd am fynd y milltir ychwanegol, ond mae hi'n cydnabod bod penawdau negyddol cyson yn gallu digaloni staff. Cos stori strwg mae rhywun yn apto glywad bob amser, so mae yn neis bod rhywun yn bod na bethau da yn digwydd yn yr NHS efe bod na bobl yn fodlon mynd efyll i'r extra yna. Mi'n ffrindio fel lots yn yr sydd a maen nhw yn mynd yn dechrau bod efeu o'n ar ei ddeu off ar ddysadl nhw'n ddysil yn gwbo bod rhywun yn strygglo a bod eisiau mynd i'r cartra. Cos maen nhw da'n un ffrindio fel teulu da'n eisiau gwneud y gorau dyna pan mae rhywun yn nyrsio i gael wneud a mae rhywun yn gweithio o'r iach awnegol ar ôl o'r iach gwaith yn dod efeu o'n ar ddweud cens. Ac ar ddiwrnod cyntaf ffair eian llanelwedd, mae ffermwyr dofetnod yng Nghymru yn cael eu hannog i fod ar ei gwyliadwraeth am fliw adar. Ar ôl i lywodraeth Cymru gyhoeddi y byddai mesurau newydd yn dod i rym i atal lledeiniad yr haint. Mae cadeirydd bwrdd dofetnod yr Undeb, Richard Williams, yn rybuddio am amseroedd heriol iawn i'r sector. O'r ail o'r agfur, bydd yn rhaid i adar caeth yng Nghymru gael eu cadw dan do neu gwahanu rhag adar gwyll. A dyna'r cyfan am y tro, mi fydd y bulletin nesa am ddau o'r gloch, ond tan hynny felly, pnawn dau chi. Welcome back to uh, this year's Winter Fair, which was opened officially this morning by David Dwyn Finch.
Yes, welcome back to the uh, Royal Welsh Showground. And as you can see, it's uh, a busy day here on the first day of this year's Winter Fair. And there's plenty been going on, of course. We've had the news, but what will be making the headlines here during the course of the next two hours? The last classes of the heifers in the uh, cattle ring. And there's plenty going on, of course, in the sheep ring. There are more sheep here than ever before. And we will be also visiting the, uh, the horse ring. Well, we have mentioned several times, of course, that the emphasis during the uh, winter fair is on the food chain. And the phrase that they are using, of course, is from the gate to the plate. And uh, we've been asking you your opinion. We want to know what you think will be the selling price at auction for the overall champion in the cattle section. And uh, from those results, well, at the moment, the majority of you think that the uh, price will be somewhere between seven and a half thousand and ten thousand pounds. And uh, 36.4 going for between 5,000 and 7,000 pounds. We shall see later on. We also want to know what you think will be the selling price at auction for the champion in the sheep section. You can get in touch using our va uh, various uh, social media outlets. Right, on we go. And uh, let's go straight to the... Uh, the cattle ring, and here's Gerald. Yeah, we joined the cattle. Heifers still going, and we, we are now in Class 7. A heifer sired by a shallery bull. It's a sire is shallery bull, but it can be out of any crossbred dam. It can be out of a Belgian blue limousine, or even a Hereford, or a lot of other native breeds that we've seen. But we are... Uh, Quite a strong entry in this particular section with seven heifers forward and we've gone up in the weight quite a bit now too with the heaviest animal on show here is a massive 760 kilos. That's a lot of beef on the hoof. You see uh, Shallery then a renowned for throwing this white orange cream or whatever colour you want to call it. It obviously depends on what their actual dam is and a lot of them are limousine cross cows so you will get a little bit of um, of the black then in a lot of the limousine cross cows because they're crossbred cows themselves in the start, probably crossed with the Belgian blues. So, but when they come out of them, then by a white shallery sire, then we do see it tend to get a lot of cream or or grey coloured animals. And as we see right down across the line, we see one is a red colour. But strength then the the shallery then are are the heaviest of the well perhaps the cemental and the hereford would be the heaviest and largest of the terminal sires that, or crossbred sires that we use in this particular country and uh, therefore the shallery cross heifers that are on display then as I stated are very heavy and quite heavy uh, weight wise. Quite a variation of uh, weights in this class general they're ranging from 512 kilos all the way up to 760 kilos. Well, it's now on 250 kilos there's a lot of weight to give away isn't it's, it it's, a smaller it's a animal yes yes. yes. And as you have alluded to, we have some real classy names attached to these animals. Look. <laughs> we, we've got some Elsas going on there, so I think so, there's probably a bit of Frozen fans there. We've got Seven Oaks, Sofian, K Sarah, Sarah. <laughs> there isn't a supermodel at the top end of it. Yeah, I don't know if she's quite a, We'll see if she will get to the supermodel status. I don't know, but uh, you know, we'll have to wait and see. But. Uh, 
Our judge here has been on these heifers all morning of different sizes and and different breeds, so he's been very diligent and examined every animal with the same care and attention. He has been a, a very thorough judge, hasn't he? Yes, indeed, to be fair. Slight variation in the shape as we've seen on the uh, native breeds as we were alluded to, their rear ends are not quite as excessive. And Charlery, then, even though they are a continental breed, perhaps l- not quite as muscular as the limousines and the Belgian Blue Cross. No, then. no, but a, a bigger framed, stronger animal, yeah, isn't so it? Yes. As alluded to, the strongest terminal size yes. that is used and therefore. Heavy boned, perhaps a little bit as well, aren't they? Yeah, 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 yeah. Or stronger bone, perhaps, than the, the limousine, limousine blondes and Belgian blues, yeah. then, aren't they? Yeah. I think the Chalery was probably one of the first imported. I, I was thinking something of the French Gerard. breeds that came over to these shores then many, many years ago, yeah. and the Chalery then, uh, like the local suckle calves, and sales were dominated by Chalery when, oh, when they arrived on the scene in the years, start, didn't it? they? Yes. I think probably t- overtaken by the by the limmers and then maybe a little bit for easier calving. That's a lot of it, yes. A lot of uh, like uh, hill farmers then using a massive Chalery bull and small hill bred cows did occur. Did occur yeah. Some yeah. It is and always is a good statement that rings in my ears and many, many times is that it would take a very good man to sell a dead calf, wouldn't it? <laughs> no, it so a live calf yeah, will yeah, always give you profit. Like it so, yes, yeah. yes. Chalery featured uh, back, I think, and we done the anniversary. I think it was a Chalery cross bullock that won the first ever winter fair many, many years ago. And uh, we'll have to wait and wait till tomorrow to see if he does, if a shallery actually comes through again. But there's a very good animals on display in the heifer section here. And uh, we can see then showing this heifer then is Mr. Denley Jenkins. And uh, yeah, so shown here many times then, Mr. Denley Jenkins, and also been a judge himself. So uh, he's had been at both ends of the job here yes, at the, at the Winter fair. fair. Yes, indeed. So he should know what is required then. <laughs> yes. But unfortunately, it's Mr. Willis that is in charge of this and not Mr. Jenkins. So yeah. uh, Yes, that's quite right. We see a few professional handlers then. We see Mr. Steve O'Kane there handling an animal there in front of us. And I do believe he's showing the animal on behalf of Mr. Mikey Rowlands. Several of these gentlemen that purchase these animals in the suckle calves sales and whatever do hire people do and, but anyway we'll have to come back to see what Mr Willis has done with this particular section later on Thank you very much uh, Emma and Gerald and uh, we join uh, Teleri now who's uh, at the young farmers section on the show ground and uh, she's joined by Seanad Davis who is the Young Farmers Competition Secretary and has been since uh, September. She's also a, a school teacher, so she's got plenty to do. And she she's not the kind of person who likes to be idle at all, but she's on, on holiday, as it were, here working for two dames. And it's uh, a joy to be here. And uh, Teller is just asking what kind of competitions uh, are being held here. Well, at the moment, there is a, uh, a chocolate Yule log competition going on in the background. Uh, they also have a beef and butcher's lamb stock judging. There's a lamb carcass judging competition. Uh, there's decorating a Christmas wreath competition as well as a winter fair promotional video competition. So there's obviously plenty going on. And uh, the young farmer members uh, enjoy 
participating and competing here at the Winter Fair. And it's nice to see uh, the younger members and the older members coming here to compete. And as uh, far as the, uh, the Winter Fair is concerned, um, as we mentioned uh, previously, uh, there is an emphasis on the food chain. And uh, there's a Christmas theme, of course, uh, or a Christmas festive mood here uh, during this period of time. And there's quite uh, a Christmas theme to many, many of the competitions that we have. Uh, as well, of course, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the, um, the judging of the carcasses and that's that's a great thing about uh, the Winter Fair. There is a great uh, variety uh, here in the Winter Fair as far as the competing is concerned, as well as everything else that's to be seen around the showground. And uh, Teleri is just asking, uh, are the members uh, excited by what's ahead in the future? Are they concerned? Well, Sean Ed was just saying that uh, the entries uh, that have been uh, put forward uh, on the up, uh, the numbers have increased, and there's been a lot of work being done prior to actually arriving here uh, at the Winter Fair itself. So they've had to prepare. Um, and it just shows that the, that the younger members are enthusiastic to keep the, uh, the movements uh, going and they enjoy the, the variety that's available to them. Well, with this particular competition that's going ahead, which is uh, the decorating a chocolate you log, it's uh, one member... Uh, who has to be uh, 18 years of age or under the 1st of September. Uh, and obviously it's the, the task is to decorate a chocolate Yule log suitable for the Christmas period. And they're obviously coming to the end of this particular competition and uh, will be judged uh, later on. <laughs> Well, don't forget, we do have a, a competition. Uh, visit the website. Uh, an opportunity for you to win a voucher for £100 to buy uh, to be bought at the, your local uh, butcher shop. Now, read all about it. The Supreme uh, Champion in the Cattle section last year was sold for how much? £5,200? £6,400? or £8,000. Just visit the website for all the details. <laughs> right, it's straight back to the sheep ring. Here's Emma and Gerald again. Thank you, Gareth. Yes, uh, changed the sections a little bit now, and we, I think we will be joining the Piwa Welsh Mountain Breeds section, so all the different breeds that fall under that uh, section umbrella then. Yes, and obviously then we change our judge, and we have Mr Cyril Lewis, Penabrin, Penmachno, Betters Coid. He is a familiar face in the society. He won the John Gittins Award in 2008 as a former judge and competitor. So he should know what he's about, shouldn't he? And uh, he keeps pure Welsh mountain sheep himself. So he will have obviously sold and handled a lot of this particular breed in his time of these Welsh pure Welsh mountain breeds. So yes. Hopefully, then, uh, he will be, or he is well equipped, I would think, to handle this particular situation. <laughs> yes, and we've got uh, plenty of entries in this Trigaron Welsh class. Yeah, they're slightly smaller than this time, then, in terms of about 34 kilo. Oh, sorry, there's a pair of 30 kilos here, actually. Uh, go on, we do go up to about 90 yeah, six or seven kilos in one pair. So yeah, there'll be a, there's a quite one pair is actually or two pairs sticking out are quite larger, but the majority of them are in that and, mid thirties, which a lot of probably these mountain, would be mountain breeds would be later lambing a lot of the lowland with the with the Turnham and Asaya breeds. So they take it and they take a little bit longer to mature as as well. Then so you, well, yes, most definite. Uh, you're, you're right in both angles then, but um, they're not designed to be very big sheep because of the conditions no. which they live under anyway. That's right. And, uh, yes. yes 
just say, ah, oh, later lamb in numbers, uh, but they would be at this particular thing in the end of November, like they would be five and a half to six months old, yes. so they'd be quite, you know, quite strong. And a lot of these being shown in the in the natural coats, even though there's a little bit of little bit of last minute judging going on by right there. We're going to see a couple of trim prayers surely then along the way, which people are. But uh, like we alluded to many times, yes, it's presentation, and it doesn't matter if they're trimmed or not. So they're, they're presented very clean and yep. and look the part, but obviously handling underneath all that is what is the business end of this particular section, isn't it? They're not breeding stock; they are prime. Prime animals. You can see the size dif difference in size there between these two pairs. Very smart, smartly turned out pair by yes, here indeed, now. Yes, uh, yeah. It's quite, it's quite, uh, uh, quite. Um, uh, how can I say then? To enter this particular class and a pair of dragaran type, they they have to be a, say a uniform type of pair of matching lambs. But there'd be quite a significant difference in the actual type of lamb, or heads of lambs and years of lambs and whatever in this particular section. And there is a lot of white face breeds between the chiviots all the way through the several South Country chiviots, Brecknock Hill chiviots, yes. North Country chiviots. You know, we get into the Tal the Taliban Welsh, the and the Brie Welsh, yeah. the, the um, Tregaran Welsh, and the North Wales Welsh. So, a significant difference to yes. say select a Tregaran type of Welsh out, isn't it? Because yeah. a lot of these handlers are certainly not within the Tregaran area, are they? <laughs> no, no, no. A little bit of crossing. A lot of people cross the South Wales mountain sheep with Cheviot ewes to get perhaps the Talibon well, type and that. that so that pair in the centre now, they've got a little bit. Seem to have a little bit of a little bit of red, red in them. Yeah, a little through, bit of camp, like as they, they call yeah. it throughout their wools. Yes. But at the end of the day, here at the Winter Fair, it's all about what's underneath those coats, isn't it? Yes, quite right. And, uh, yeah, yes, quite right. Yeah. See, the judge there now, he's just stop it, touching uh, uh, the top of the tail then, so that, that's an indication of how fat the lambs are, how well finished they are. That's quite right. Um, uh, they're called the dock, it that's is it. called. Yeah. Actually, that's quite in the sheep industry, then the uh, judge would feel the thickness of the dock on the animal but within the cattle and then it would be surrounding the tail as well they'd indicate yes. the fact it would be you know. it is interesting how they they look for the same things in all the animals but the terminology uh, changes a little bit oh, between bit, them yes, yeah. and, uh, and another thing within the, uh, the sheep industry is it's, it's the killing out percentage has become a big factor in the Islam world because I mean if you've got a, a, a 55 kilo lamb and he only kills out a, t a 20 kilo as well the killing up percentage is very poor. Yes. Uh, plus, a lot has gone in getting the bone. The bone, like obviously we can't eat the bone. No. Nope. But there's a lot of bone left in the carcass when it's killed. But um, that has a significant bearing on a lot of butchers will be, would be buying animals of, uh, say, a finer bone. And therefore, they get more saleable product it, it, at the end. It's a higher yield of meat That's off that right. carcass That's than right. is meat, yes. Yeah. So well, now we have to study a different judge's style maybe <laughs> this time, Em, and see where uh, this judge ends up at the uh, first, second, third prize. But I think we'll have to come back a little bit later on to see whether he is the same as if our he's previous judge. he's done any moving about as well. We'll have to come back in a little while and see how... He certainly made a selection to start off Mr. with. Mr. Lewis has paid.
Welcome back. Let's head straight away to the uh, sheep ring and join Emma and Gerald. Yes, thank you very much, Gareth. We're uh, coming back to class number 70, which is the uh, Trigaron Welsh, or pair of Trigaron Welsh lambs, I should say, Gerald. Yes, indeed, and he's arrived at his decision. And uh, I'd say then uh, he'd be one of the stronger pairs of lambs that are in the section. I have to say, I did quite like this pair because they look like they've come straight from the field to the show and... Yeah, fair comment. There ain't you a know, lot of trimming on these. They, like I say, they've washed them and cleaned them up. And that, uh, I mean, they're, they're even nice, the original I'm, pitch mark is still yeah, on them, yes, so they haven't yes. done over exaggerated, well, have they? But uh, I think there's something quite nice about that. They look, then, a, they, they they look, look a very nice matching pair yes. of lambs, yes, indeed, to be fair. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Perhaps they have, you're right, they have come straight yeah, from the yeah, field. Yeah, possibly, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not a lot of tuition and uh, no. Then. Yeah. Second place there, I can see, is Mr Gethin Lloyd from Brekfa. It's all about the first prize lambs it is. And it is Mr. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Philly Claire, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, they're just saying that uh, they're extremely happy having won this particular section. And, uh, and they're competing, as it happens, for the first time this year. Oh, yeah, we're ready. Lot of luck, lot of luck. I'm going to know on. 97 kilos there, so... Um, I mean, he's just nah, emphasising nah, the fact that they were 97 nah, kilos. Nah, <laughs> and they've certainly got their hands full. <laughs> and the winter fair obviously means an awful lot. And uh, <laughs> just referring to the fact that they've been uh, quite difficult to handle. But congr congratulations. Indeed, and of course the lady uh, looking after one of the sheep there was Celine, who of course is uh, Di Jones Llanilar's uh, granddaughter. And uh, I'm sure that uh, he would be over the moon. And I'm sure Olwen, uh, grandmother, is uh, sitting at home and uh, enjoying seeing Celine getting the red card. Right, let's head back now to the cattle ring and we'll rejoin Emma and Gerald. Yes, we're in the, hopefully, the conclusion of the heifer sired by the Chalry Bull. And Mr Willis, once we've been away, has been busy and uh, looks as if he's got a line-up, perhaps someone here, what she would like. At the moment, number 17 is standing at the top at the moment, Elsa, run by Mr. Mike Rowlands. Powerful heifer, that, isn't she? 709 kilos of beef on the hoof. Very, very correct type of heifer, to be fair. Very nice. Yeah, she, she, is, she is like a statue well, there, isn't yes, she? Yes, she is. Very yeah. well made and turned out tremendous. You know, he hasn't made his decision yet, so hopefully he won't be too long. And another huge heifer in third place there. Yes, but there they sort of sp split those big heifers then with a sort of sweeter, younger heifer. Maybe so, yes. Less mature, should I say. Now then, is he, yeah, is he going he to the cards? Yes. yes, and it is Mr. Mike Rowlands, the Elsa. Been shown, as I alluded to before, by Mr. Steve O'Kane. Who uh, does prepare cattle and show cattle on behalf of? There's the handler, Mr. Mike Rowlands, or the owner, sorry, I should say. This smaller gentleman in the middle there receiving the rosettes and prizes from Tlingerig. You can see there, then it's Keddy View Livestock. This is Mr. Keynes. Oh. Oh. You can safely say she wasn't very pleased with the no, result. No, I, I don't think she was, was she? She <laughs> didn't like the colour of that card at all. No, no, no. It's the red when she went did. Yeah. Manas or Web by Snug. English commentary is available on this programme depending on your device. Either press the red button or use the audio selection option.
Any problems, contact the S4C viewers hotline and the details are on the screen. As for the wreck, and those are fire air, be bound. Well, let's pay our first visit of the afternoon to the horse ring. And here's Rachel Thomas. Thanks, Gareth. So we're um, now on the Yearlin Section A Filio Gelding class. And um, up in front of us is Tracy Jones again. We did see her earlier. So this time with the Yearlin Filly, and she's already won a class with her Filly Foal. And this is um, number 1187, Nantfothog Blue Taffeta this time, by the same stallion, Sentinel Ramos, and out of Nantfothog Blue Moon. So uh, currently standing top of the line. We're not sure, obviously, if she's going to stay there, but... Um, Oh, we cut in straight to the result. And yes, Tracy Jones has managed to stay there. So she's having a great day. Two wins today. So she'll be very happy driving back to Carmarthen tonight. Uh, another homebred pony. Can't quite see the number of the second pony for you. But I believe it's 1185. And it's Reese Freeman's Penuel Secret Lady. Another one bred by the exhibitor, Ply Plus Deru Pimpinel. So this will be in English. What a day you're having. That's the second red rosette here at the Winter Fair. I can't believe it. It's like a dream come true. I've been trying for so many years at this show, and all I've had so far is a third. To have two firsts today, I can't believe it. Well, the fillies look exceptionally well, and they're related as well. Yes, um, they're both by Ramos. And they've both got the same grandsire as well. Oh, well, massive congratulations. You, you've got a bit of running to do again now, so uh, <laughs> you've got a bit of extra help to come in for the yes. championship? Hopefully, yes, I've got help at hand. Oh, so, well, fingers crossed. So I'll go ahead and good luck. Thank you very much. So there we go. There's uh, Tracy's dream achieved there to get two wins in one day. Previously only ever having a third, so big celebrations down there tonight for Tracy Jones. Both similar stamps of pony there and enjoying her moment in the spotlight. So well done to Tracy and we'll see her later on in the championship.
Welcome back, and we're heading straight for the cattle ring, and we'll join Gerald and Emma. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Gareth. Yes, we're now uh, joining uh, the British Blue Sired classes, and uh, it's interesting to see. We can see on the top of the screen there, Gerald. It's uh, class 8.1. So we split up into weights and they weigh every individual animal when it comes to the show. So we're in the first section and these would be the lightest animals in this particular class. And they'll work up the weights then as the class is going. They'll go to 8.2 next and then they will pick their winner out. Well, actually, no, the two section winners do go through to the final in the end. So uh, as, as we will see later on, the limousine is the most predominant breed crossbreds here and they will probably have in their excess of four or five different sections so but anyway in the british blue side and uh, these can be out of any breed of cow again which uh, i would say probably a limousine cross cow because if you put a belgian blue born bull on a belgian blue cross cow usually you end up with excessive muscle in and uh, they call it a three-quarter bread Black is the colour. I was about to say, just, just the one little red heifer in, in this class then. And she's probably out of a pedigree limousine because of the red colour that's come through in her then, so... Yes. Yeah, sweet little heifer, very nice. Very, very nice little heifer. And you like this roan? <laughs> I do. I've been teased about that before, Gerald. <laughs> There's something a little bit eye-catching about them. I suppose that's, that's why the, they put a bit of sparkle and glitter or something or a pretty ribbon on them in, in, in the winter fair here, just something to... It is usually, though, um, I don't know if you talked a lot of the showmen themselves, it's a solid colour they like, right. red, or, red or black, and black yeah. is the one because they do, as you can see, it's immaculate and then the white sawdust of the background and yes. everything, they, yes. they really do shine and stand yeah. out, don't they? And uh, It's a solid colour, I think, preferably the, most of the uh, exhibitors would like. The church there. And as of sorry, as of before, then a lot of um, black Belgian blues have been bred now. Yes, that uh, rather yes. than the blue and whites and yeah. that as as they were. So uh, even though they are the British Belgian Blue Society now, aren't they? They formed their own society. Yes, so they're called British Blues rather than yeah. than the Belgian yeah. Blues. And I think, I think they've bred the locomotion a lot better, the style of the animal and that is better. So to the originals that came in. Uh, you can say they're excessive, perhaps. Black limousines now, can't you? Basically, <laughs> no locomotion. Why there's a shape <laughs> oh, yes, on them? Yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. And a lot of them have used them. Then, there was a so. fashion at one time. They went black and white. Do you remember the rather right. than the, the right. blue? Yeah. It's very seen, interesting. There was seen it? a lot of white Belgian blue pedigree Belgian blue yeah. at one time. Like, but yeah. I don't see very few of them now. No. But it's what's underneath the jacket is counts, isn't it? It's not. Uh, Absolutely. The third and current line, so they get. If I go with the arms, I will not sound it. Judge being very thorough again with this class as he has been all day. The judge being Mr. Greg Willis from Kevin Maur Farm, Monkswood. Casting his eye over this. Uh, class of heifers. See the sellers. Then company there then, Mr. and Mrs. in the same class there with two heifers. Um, they've been very successful here at the Winter Fair and do a lot of showing right throughout the, the summer season as well and a lot of these animals will have been out in the summer seasons in the summer shows and now as they come building towards the prime stock shows of the at the end of the season and this will be the, like I say the end of the road for a lot of them unless they're still eligible to go on for next year if they're not too heavy Salas Heffer to the to the right there tremendous length on her isn't it yes there is yeah yes, indeed so the judge then, he's taking his time and I think he might take a bit of time over this class. So we'll come back later on. 
Right, a quick hop and skip and a jump from the uh, cattle ring to the horse ring, and here's Rachel. Thank you. So, we're back now for the Section A Championship, which you can just see in the background there. So, uh, Tracy Jones has had to borrow a handler as she's got two forward in this. So, there we've got the yearling colt, the colt foal, the yearling filly, the filly foal uh, at the top of the line and then we've got the class seconds and our judge Dora Wynn Jones standing them side on um, a really good way to to sort of compare your ponies uh, especially in a smaller ring like this so uh, Dr Dora Wynn Jones there from the Elastad, making her final deliberation there. All interesting, all all really type B, all sort of grey ponies, very similar in type and stamp here in front of her. Uh, sometimes, obviously, we see some judges prefer a lot of white some don't like white splashes, you know, sometimes pony tend to go for roans, some go for old fashioned, some go for ponies that are going to make your your ridden, lead rein first ridden type ponies, your quality sort of, it would be all quality ponies, but your more sort of, shall we say, extravagant ponies. Um, Dora Wynn Jones here, yeah, I think she's made a decision. I do know that she has a very good taste in dogs. Um, okay. as she keeps two corgis. So uh, a lady after my own well. heart there. I'm a corgi fan as well. So um, just going up to her chief steward there. There's a little bit of discussion, but I'm sure she has um, found a result. Now she's making sure that she tells the steward the correct ponies because there's nothing worse than a steward getting it wrong and calling the wrong just the Horse or pony forward. Fortunately, I haven't had that happen to me in my judging career. <laughs> and I wouldn't want to, but when there's a line of grey ponies, it's easily done. So it looks like it's gone to the Colt Foal. So this is 1127. Uh, Roland Williams is Saram Royal Knight. <laughs> and there we go. We've got the Yearlin filly coming up to take the reserve spot. And this is Tracy Jones from um, Carmarthenshire with Nant Fothog Blue Taffeta. Good day for that stud today, um, taking two firsts. So there's the little Colt Foal who looks very pleased with himself to have been champion at the Winter Fair. Yes. So that little <laughs> nice moment there. So there's our Section A champion, Saram Royal Knight. And hopefully we'll come up. So this will be in English for you. Brilliant. A bit emotional. Oh. Do you know what? He takes a lot. He looks fabulous. Yeah. Uh, and he's a lovely cop. You've done a fantastic job on him. They don't come along like this very often. And you just know. <laughs> so, brilliant. Oh, no way. We'll die out. Look at the card there. That's really nice to see someone uh, means the world to uh, an owner there. And yeah, he is a lovely cop, actually. And. Uh, he does know it. Lovely Earl in Philly as well. And obviously this colt will be coming back for the Supreme tomorrow. So uh, an overnight stay for him to um, all add to his education. So um, we'll be back later for the bees. Well, as you can see, Nia is uh, back in the food hall. And she's with uh, Kirwin Humphreys. Uh, from a company called Coffee Dre, which is uh, based in Carnarvon, also part of the Cowine uh, stand here at the uh, Royal Welsh Showground, the Winter Fair. And Kairwin is just uh, explaining how we came up with the idea during lockdown and 
he got a few of his friends involved and they were more than happy uh, to help him out and since then they've been uh, expanding uh, the business and they've also got a uh, a coffee trailer as it were traveling around north wales <laughs> so what kind of coffee is it, is it and where does it come from well the beans the tootle is the main blend comes from south and central america the decaf Segontium is a single origin bean from uh, Mexico. And the names, of course, Tutil and Segontium, are different areas within the town of uh, Carnarvon. And the coffee is there to celebrate the people, the language and the area of uh, Carnarvon. And they are using local illustrators to do the illustration. There's a company on Anglesey um, run by a, a lady called Gwenna and she's the one responsible for the illustrations on the, uh, the packaging. And as Cairwyn is uh, emphasising there, they try to keep uh, everything within the company as local as possible. So, uh, Cairwyn just said they've uh, recently invested in a, a, a coffee roaster, uh, so we need some room uh, for that particular piece of equipment, but it means we can expand the company next year. And uh, we're based currently just uh, outside of the town itself, but we're looking uh, for somewhere within the town uh, for uh, to establish the, uh, to uh, locate the, the company, as it were. And uh, as far as purchasing the produce concerned, then you can connect with them uh, via uh, social media. Uh, and as Kerwin mentioned earlier on, they do have a, uh, a coffee trailer. They converted uh, an old horse box into a coffee trailer, as you were, and they go around. Uh, uh, different uh, fairs, markets, Christmas markets this time of year, of course. And then in the summer, we were making ice coffees at uh, race courses and uh, all kind of different events. <coughs> and, and he has just asked for a cup of coffee, and here's one Kerwin prepared earlier, as it were. This is the Tootil blend from uh, the, uh, the South and Central American blend. It's a medium roast, and it's... Uh, it's easy to use and it's their best seller. <laughs> and Cairo is just saying that he prefers his coffee black and strong. <laughs> and I just Nia just said, wish you all the best and this is a great opportunity.
And we are back again in Class 801, hopefully for a conclusion of the heifer sired by a British blue. And it is the first particular section of this heifer sired by a blue. Yes. You see then the uh, sellers family. Very well represented there, both of them standing at the top of the line. Not a betting person, but I'm sure one of them. <laughs> yes, as you said before, Gerald, when there's a large number of entries in a class, they will split them into uh, weight sections to make the judging a little easier. Um, with the winter fair, then all the judging is um, conducted inside shed, so the, cla the rings aren't as big as in the summer show and just makes it a little bit easier for the judges and competitors to have smaller classes and then bring the winners back later on. Well, it's, an, it's, a, it's a very enclosed environment, but then obviously there's enough room for them to see the locomotion and are walking around the arena here in, in, in front of this crowd and uh, in, in perhaps then on sawdust and if they were on grass, they'd feel their feet a little bit more and maybe be a little bit more difficult to handle. And we do see that very often in the summer show that they find their feet, they would say, but... Uh, here within you, but there, as I alluded to many times, these handlers have spent hours and hours of training these animals and wanting them to behave because this is their moment, isn't it? So you don't want an animal jumping about and behaving badly. No, but uh, all the exhibitors here being very well behaved anyway. Yeah. I wonder if there's any sort of uh, family competition going on. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. <laughs> Who's the dominant partner and who yeah. would think they'd want the heifer that stood the best <laughs> chance? They, they in picked it? the yeah. best one, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, fair yes. comment. We'll see, I think. But uh, it doesn't matter what they think, it's what the judge thinks. And uh, the two animals standing at the top, as I said earlier on, then are both from the Sellers family. It'll be interesting to see if there's. If they maybe from the same sire or how uh, if they're related at all then these two heifers? Well, actually, then they would be uh, looking at the year tag numbers. Ah, and they're they from look different like they're from herds. different. Yes, yes, different yes. herds anyway. So uh, and yes, there it could well be a AI bull that it could be the father of of the pair of them. And, uh, Two very similar heifers, when very, very little weight between them. Oh gosh, the, the whole class, though, aren't they? Oh, good class. Tremendous turnout. Yes, to be fair. And a weight range in this class. And this, the, the first group, of course, will be the uh, lighter group, and it's uh, a range of 436 to 600 kilos. That's a fair old weight range in this one. Yes, it is indeed, yes. And, uh, nice line-up there of very even bunch of animals and... Some great names again in this uh, class. We have Super Perfection, Lady of the Night, Calendar Girl. <laughs> oh, he's swapped the two sellers' ah, family around. Ah, right, OK, oh, so whiz. there we go. Didn't even look at one another when they passed one another. <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure it was the wife that was smiling. Because she yeah, has Calendar Girl to coming yeah. to the top then. So she's passed Super Perfection. Household will share if it is to be this particular way, then uh, the household will share the honours, I'm sure. First and second, it looks as if they're going to. Ah, there we yeah, go. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They've made up. Oh, now, yeah, just yeah, made up. <laughs> I think he's admitted defeat, I think. <laughs> Uh, he he knows he knows best. Yeah, fair that. comment. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we're not going to get into that, but anyway, no. <laughs> well, Teleri now is in the carcass hall, and uh, the meat hampers competition has just come to an end, and uh, Teleri is joined by uh, Simon Thomas, and. Uh, He's been judging since uh, half past nine this morning and he's been well impressed with what he's seen. Uh, so just asked him, uh, did you get a chance to uh, taste any at all? Well, no, obviously not, as you can see. 
uh, how they'd been decorated and being presented. Um, there was a hamper, um, a gift charcuterie hamper was one of the classes uh, in the competition earlier in the day. Um, and you can see the one, the one in the middle is obviously the one that uh, yeah, won the, the main prize. And uh, what uh, Simon's looking for with the ch charcuterie is that people look for something that's a bit different, uh, maybe at this time of year, particularly leading up uh, to the Christmas period. There's a, a variety of different meats in the hamper, and it's been well prepared, and that's the one that were, won the first prize. And the uh, reserve champion um, is included next to it. And what he's looking for more often than not is the way that they've been presented and he's referring now to the uh, the winner in the uh, the breakfast hamper which includes pigs in blanket blanket and stuffing and bacon and so on but he's he was uh, commenting on how well the whole package as it were was was presented and tell her, it's just asking, when, you, when you're looking at the hampers, do you look at uh, the fact that the meat comes from one particular farm or a variety of farms? And Simon's just saying that the, the most important thing, as far as he's concerned, is the fact that they support local farms, whether the produce comes from one farm or a, or a collection of different farms. Well, this particular... Um, well, hamper is uh, has a, a produce that uh, people uh, or the competitors rather have uh, prepared themselves everything is local uh, you can see there's some honey there there's the bread there there's some black pudding there sausages as well and all natural local products and that's quite important <laughs> um, the second place hamper there's a few items there that have been purchased but um, he's quite happy with the standard of the competition that he's been judging here in the Carcass Hall today and uh, the next category was the, the Welsh showcase of meat hamper quite a few uh, game included in quite a few of them, venison, woodcock and that yeah, and the one that won the, the red card, the first prize there's, a, there's some lamb there, there's beef there and sausages and uh, pigs in blanket but uh, he just liked the way it had been decorated and the way it's been prepared and uh, Teller is just saying this, this is what I should be aiming for then. This is the creme de la creme. Um, and as Simon's saying, it's easy to market and, uh, and, and um, sell an item that's been decorated in that fashion. Well, don't forget, you can uh, follow everything that's going on at the Winter Fair on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Right, let's head over back to the horse ring. Quite a busy afternoon there today. Let's rejoin Rachel. Thanks, Gareth. And we're back up in the horse ring and now we've moved on to the Section B section. So um, we've got the Colt Falls in there at the minute with an entry of 13. And nice close up there of our judge, another very glamorous judge. So, um, and a little bit about <coughs> our judge as we're doing the initial pull in. And it's this uh, Mrs. Larry Wynne Marshley Jenkins from the Cantra Stud from Talabont in Ceredigion. So, uh, Eleri, well known in the pony circles and um, does a lot with the ridden breeds, herself and her sister, both successful and have qualified for hoys with their A's, B's, C's and D's. 
having qualified two this year for North Grand Slam and Nant Fochod Blue Bow Tie. Interestingly enough, um, one of the section A's that obviously if you switched on earlier, you'd have seen that um, Nant Fochod Stud had two winners today and um, our section B judge here has uh, one of their ponies as well going under saddle so we've um, got a winner here and it's going to um, it's actually it's actually we're in the wrong number but it's um, William Owen and this is Helen Altair and by Phil Burns Razzle Dazzle and out of a Arth Sunflower and we've got 12.07 in second and that's John Llewellyn James with a Arth John Snow 12.08 your third pony Kevin Morgan's Astrid Cochie Mabon well so uh, we're going to let you listen to this interview. Brilliant. So brilliant. And this pony's come down from Anglesey. So there's the winning section B coat foal, Hillin Altair. And this pony's uh, been out this year and been first and reserve champion at the Cluid Show and second at Anis Mon this year. So a little bit of experience there and we'll be back shortly to catch up on the rest of the classes.
Welcome back to the uh, Royal Wells Showground here in Llanelweth on this, the first day of this year's Winter Fair. We're heading back to the sheep ring and uh, we'll join Emma and Gerald. Yeah, we're back in the sheep ring for another visit and we're now into the continental breeds and uh, uh, perhaps Emma might be a little bit naughty to say it but usually the champion usually comes out of these uh, Texel, Beltex, Chalry breeds don't they just a bit similar yes. to the cattle like and uh, it's, it's a bit of a change from uh, from this year's uh, this morning's um, yeah type of sheep and also a different style of showing them as well they're he more heavily trimmed and although I have to say we've got a bit of sparkle and some ribbon on the on the on the top pair there putting in some extra effort but they really are turned out to oh, tremendous to be fair such a high standard aren't they? Dutch texels a little bit smaller Perhaps than the the uh, standard text, yes. then, they? Sort of in between the belt text and are, yeah. the good quality lambs, to be fair. Tremendous lambs here, but I'm going to be maybe a bit rude, but not quite a pair for me in, in, in those. No, to be fair, it, it'd you know. be quite difficult to, oh. uh, to do that, even though in the, oh, so the hundreds of lambs you have to pick from, or, or, or so depends hard. or whatever, but it is yeah. hard to get everyone Especially exactly Especially if you've got the same. one exceptionally good one, is it? And to get them at the same weight at the same time. That's and the, at part, the yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Really nicely turned out pair there now. Um, um, the judge, Mr. Ian Lancaster, who's travelled down from Lancashire today. And uh, you mentioned, Ger Gerald, this morning about maybe how the judges weren't handling uh, uh, the, the leg, uh, but this judge certainly doing so. This is the business end. This is of of the section, isn't it? And uh, they're all about confirmation, aren't they? Uh, in uh, in the lamb job, and uh, the pair there from Hall and Son. Halls are featured very strong. In uh, absolutely in the past, aren't they? Yes, they have indeed. And uh, that pair from them then was also bred by them. And, uh, five entries in this class then. We will see later on then when we come to the sort of crossbred classes sired by a by a a Beltex or and such that there'll be larger numbers in the in the butcher's weights classes butchers they are, isn't it? Classes that's that's the, the name the, of the classes, yes. yes. So larger numbers there. So the pair I liked with the with the green ribbons then number three six three six from Brian and Dion Robertson Hughes. Very sort of a bit more solid sort of shorter neck looking pair then there bit of a different style uh, to them from the rest of the class. Mr Lancaster is a farmer and farms with his wife and they keep uh, a flock of mountain swale dales. But also a bit quite different from these. Yeah, then. yeah, quite a bit, yeah. <laughs> but uh, he does keep a lot of crossbred ewes and Beltex and he does show himself. He never actually judged at any major shows. But he does compete at major shows, especially in the mid-England area where he's from. So a, a bit of a variation in in weights here. We've got 82 kilos, 83 for the pay now. This is 82, 83. Combined weight, yeah. Two at 90. So the lambs coming in at 45 kilos, which is yes, optimum weight for these. Yeah. Yes, really, isn't it? But the percentage it? killing out percentages would, would be, be higher. Very high. yeah, yes, very yes, high. yes, yes, yes. Oh, now then. First pair to be brought forward is that pair from Hall you uh, yes, indeed, yeah. mentioned, Gerald. The so Hall family have featured very, very strongly in the Welsh Winter Fair and as in other affairs as well. They're, they're very keen on producing. This, this is actually the, the heaviest pair in the class, Gerald, 101 kilos yeah, between the two lands. 15 so, and a half, so we're talking yeah. that and the killing out percentage of these would be a 23, 24 kilo carcass yeah. easily. Easily, right? easily, yeah. yes. Of e confirmation. Yeah. 
mynd ymlaen am y dyfodol. Mae e yn stori ar hyn o bryd, yn, mae'n heriol yn dwi fod yn ffarmwr, achos mae'r holl gostau mae'n ma saethu i fyny. Doesn't stay in in here, but I actually know Mr Ian Lancaster quite, quite well. He does compete in the sheepdog world, same as myself, and uh, we have only bump into usually into one another at Eng international trials. Ian himself has represented England on the odd occasion. Very gentle style about yes, how he's indeed. handling the sheep, which yes, is indeed, to be fair. which it, which is very nice. But then I suppose he doesn't have to grip them quite. There's not as much no, wool on these. There's not wool on these. No. He doesn't have to bury through uh, two or three inches of wool. But anyway, we'll have to come back to see later on, see what Mr. Lancaster has decided. Well, Marbir, ni adan dal i bwysa mesir. And uh, from, the sh from the sheep ring straight back to the cattle where we join the second class of the uh, uh, British blue sired uh, heifers. So these now will be heavier than the first class that we saw earlier on. Yes. Uh, we've gone from 614 kilos in these to 688, so perhaps a little bit more confined class. Yes, a, pro yes, a, bit, a bit tighter weight range and... Uh, I wonder if it'll be a more difficult job to judge. Well, yes, I suppose so. Um, we have a few local people exhibiting in here then in Castle Farm Feeds, which is Mr. Albert Williams, Senny Bridge, trading under that title now instead of his daughter is running the local feed firm there. And we see Miss Annie Lewis in there again from Brecon, exhibiting on behalf of Colin Harris. Some lovely names again and hanging on to these then uh, in terms of uh, Blackberry, Black Beauty, Bessie, Twinkle Toes, Sasha and Charlotte. <laughs> I'm sure that has a lot of bearing on the judges, doesn't it? <laughs> What's your heifer called? <laughs> Perhaps some of the exhibitors wouldn't know, would they? Gosh, it looks like a coast cast, doesn't it? Actually, looking at these particular animals, I know we've gone up, a, say, a 40 or 50 kilos, but this particular class does look a lot stronger, a lot, a lot heavier, it, it, don't they? It does. I wonder if they're maybe a little bit... Older, more they mature. They probably are a little bit more mature, yes, and uh, they, but they do actually. Then um, look does at make a, a, difference, a lot doesn't stronger it? class, doesn't it? Yes. Stronger animals than yes, in the yes, class. Yes, yes, yes. It's good for the judge in, um, to um, have a, a section when uh, they're all very close weight, you know, and similar type and exa well, exactly the same type, aren't they? and then it's good that the judge has to earn his keep and make sure that. Gets the right animal, isn't it? Mr. Sellers isn't quite as fortunate in this particular lineup. He's at this particular moment. He's down in fifth position. The judge hasn't finished yet. He's been a very diligent uh, judge throughout the judging of the heifers today Mr Stand, Greg Willis standing on the top of the line at the moment is Neil Lloyd who would be exhibiting on behalf of Elvett Williams from Senny Bridge from Castle Farm Feeds and uh, that's Black Beauty with a slight change around now have we then uh, this is Annie Lewis can exhibiting on behalf of Colin Harris who's come into second place we shall see whether they will retain their positions or so the he heifer in, uh, at the head of the class at the moment then is coming in at the second heaviest at 678 kilos. Quite an interesting fact then that we see that the two heifers, Black Beauty and Blackberry, have been born into the same herd. Both have the same year num tag number, so oh. I'm not too sure on where, but anyway, we go, Mr. Black Beauty. Elvett Williams, uh, handled, as I say, on behalf of, with Neil Lloyd at the helm of the blue and black show team. Let's come out on top. We'll see them tomorrow and see how far they will come in the section.
welcome back to the Royal Welsh and quickly we'll head over to the sheep ring. Thank you Gareth, yes they're handing out the uh, cards in this class of uh, Dutch Texel lambs and the winner there Joanne Hall and that was uh, the position that we left them in when we moved away beforehand tremendous pair of lambs there Gerald Yes indeed the Hall family then have done very very well in the in the fair here over the years and they have started a campaign off this year with a very good first prize in the pair of Hill, uh, sorry, first prize in the te Dutch Texel so instead of in good put for later in the competition they do very well in the butchers classes and they do all the sections yes, well I'm, the I'm, I'm sure they? they'll have uh, several pairs of lambs here they will here. have a lot of pairs to represent yes, and, uh, oh, <laughs> Maynard just catches him as he's going out and we'll, we'll have a word with the winner We've got to have our annual chat, haven't we? Well, we do, yeah. Yes, of course. And th this is the class you won last year as well? I think we did win. Uh, I wasn't here last year, but just Joanne and the daughter come down. So but a win's a win, so it's yes. a good start to the day. Yes, of course. I was talking to your father earlier on, and uh, you've got about 1,500 of these, uh, well, sheep altogether, and about 1,000 of these cross. That's correct, yeah. That's a lot of work. That is a lot of work, but whenever you get results, I guess it pays off. Well, it's worth all the hard work. It but is, how do yeah. you do it all every year? It's just about teamwork, a good team at home, and come here and a wee bit of luck, and that's all you need. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for supporting the Welsh Show again. No Congratulations. Thank you. Cheers. Right, let's have another visit quickly to the horse ring and we'll join Rachel. Thanks, Gareth. So we're back up in the horse ring. And uh, these are the Philly Foals. And it looks like um, our judge, Aleri Wynn Marshley Jenkins, has just taken a final look around. Um, I'm afraid we've missed the trot ups but um, 20 entries in here which I think is um, a good entry for the bees so uh, a little bit of background info about Aleri um, obviously she is geared towards the ridden job so would be looking for a pony that will go on to do a job and um, to be successful under saddle she will be looking for a pony with a good big front with a good walk and free mover obviously that type of pony gives a much better ride and always nice to see I feel myself with the section B's um, they do make great children's ponies. Obviously, being up to 13 too, they can also suit small adults and uh, can make good mother-daughter shares. I think nice temperament-wise, I think the bees are possibly the greatest child's ponies. You know, your teenagers can ride them, your smaller children. Sometimes you do feel that maybe the seas aren't always as suitable as children's ponies being little powerhouses and often can be quite quite gassy, um, even though they only go up to 32. Um, they do rather have big opinions of themselves, and I do love the seas, and I think they're great. Um, and yes, there are plenty of seas out there that would be great as kids' ponies, but I think for me, bees do make ultimate children's ponies. You know, good size, the hardiness of the native breed, nice movers. As I said, they can carry your child, they can carry small adults, uh, good jumpers. You know, they are the ultimate little performance pony. And obviously nice to look at. Um, and I feel that sometimes in shows I would attend, sometimes the B classes looked sort of lacking in numbers, but 
lately they do seem to be um, on the up. I mean, this is a really good class of, of uh, yearling foals. So it looks like on an initial pull in there, and there's not going to be a change around now. We have one two two five, which is Kerry Powell's filly. Now, sadly, I think there could be an error in the catalogue, but we've just got the prefix, and it's a late till pony, um, but they haven't actually put the pony's actual name, so I can't actually give that to you, I'm afraid. But the pony's by late till Oberon and out of Penwood Blondie. So, um, I can't quite catch the second so pony for you but we can just see in shot there one two two nine and um, Polly Tibby and, uh, handling and Weber and Taylor's Farcroft party popper that pony's taken third place there hopefully our camera angle will um, pan up there we are one two three one obviously for you those of you at home without a catalogue you're interested to know um, and that second pony there is Katie Williams with Ringside Flamenco, um, bred by Alex Williams, by Walsica, Colorado, and out of Thistledown Golden Zumba. I'm happy to do the love. Well, Peter Jones, he cut a company even on him, like Mark Hatfield, the DS fellow, he died, Peter. And Gunta, my Kerry Powell. So there we are, just uh, presenting uh, the prizes. It's a Kerry Powell's Leet Hill pony. Ringside Flamenco. The very Airbach, Gadar Enitid, Kerry Powell. Looks like a nice car. See, is the interview possibly in English? Yeah, a bit shocked. I was um, brilliant. I'm over the moon. She she belongs to um, Sarah Eleanor Markland from Sweden, so she's believed in her. So um, she bought bought it bought, bought from York from, Yorkshire. Yep, yeah, from Robert, and um, she bought her. Obviously, she didn't view her. She bought her. She's got a colt um, off Robert as well. So she she bought her off Robert, and uh, obviously see her on the photos and. Sure. I, I see your partner I'm Gareth sure. a little way down the line yeah, there. Did you there. pick? Do you pick which one you get to show? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I did today. Yeah, but um, yeah. So um, oh, oh, I'm shocked. Oh, thank oh, you. Thank you very much. Well done. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. Thank you. So there we go. Just having um, a word there with the producer. So. Ken nice Powell. class there of section B. Billy Foles, a good number of the 20 forward, so that's um, really encouraging to see, especially in this day and age. Um, and we will be back a bit later on to catch up with the Erlins. Right, it's back to the food hall. And uh, Nia is with Rian Williams from uh, the company called Sugar A Spice. She's quite self-explanatory. And, of course, uh, this particular company didn't come here last year um, due to the uh, restrictions as far as COVID is concerned, of course. Um, but they have been here uh, over the past on a regular basis. But they're glad to be back this year. And the first thing... <laughs> the first thing that reminds you of the Christmas is on the horizon is the display of uh, Christmas puddings that they have on their stall. It's an old recipe. And even the packaging. Uh, my mother helps me to wrap the, the Christmas pudding. So everybody... Uh, in the family is involved. And it's that cream and black colour combination that they've uh, been using for, for many, many years now. And of course there are a variety of mince pies, the traditional, uh, the orange Viennese, the walnut crumble, which uh, is very, very popular. And uh, 
And Rihanna just asked which one is her f particular favourite. Well, it's the walnut uh, crumble mince pies. Obviously, there's some bacon tart there as well. Which has uh, some almonds and, of course, mince meat. And everything is handmade. Well, yeah, just asking, I, and you're still enjoying it because. How long have we been going now? It's been 33 years. Ingredients, Rian, have increased in price. Everything has increased in price recently. And obviously, we're aware of the, uh, the cost of uh, fuel and gas and, and uh, electricity. But the price of ingredients has, has gone up a lot. And... Uh, of course, it, it, it affects different companies in in different ways, depending on which ingredients that they use. Another Christmas cake. Every re recipe uh, uh, from sugar and spice has a, has a certain twist to it. And we use as many Welsh ingredients as we possibly can. And the fact that you uh, prepare just maybe just a, a one slice on its own, which is ideal for somebody who perhaps live on their own. And if you just want to make sure you've got a piece of cake available to hand at, in the house, then that's ideal for that also. <laughs> and all these biscuits here are made out of Welsh butter. And the, uh, and the hampers that can be seen. And uh, we've got a very, very special team. Uh, everybody gets involved. Um, and it's, it's great to have their, their enthusiasm as they um, come together to put these hampers together. And we, we also like to promote other Welsh companies and, and include their uh, produce within our own hampers. And as Nia saying, you couldn't find a better Christmas present than, than a hamper, food, drink, and obviously, <laughs> Nia wants a taste of, and this is the almond. Christmas bacon tart. And uh, even though it's November, Nia's going to say a Merry Christmas and it's lovely to see you back uh, here at the Winter Fair.
Welcome Welcome back to the Royal Welsh Showgun. We're here live on S4C until 4 o'clock this afternoon. And our first port of call is going to be the Sheep Ring, and we'll join Emma and Gerald. Thank you, Gareth. Yes, we're going back now to the uh, continental classes of the of the sheep competitions. And, uh, we've seen lots of different types of uh, breeds and sheep this morning. Well, mae'r adran yma fel ni wedi gweld yn ystod y bum lynedd diwetha mae'n amlwg, mae nhw'n cynyddu mewn nifer hefyd, ond mae'n holl holl bwysig. Beth yn ni'n gweld yn y bwtseried yn hongian bob dydd mwy na lai, mae yna cros o un o'r continentals mae ym mhob un o'r brydu erbyn nawr. Er mwyn bod yn ffermwyr ni'n gallu dod lan i'r pwysau, mae nhw angen i gweld, ond hefyd mae yna dipyn o quality yn y cig sydd gyda ni fy'n hyn wrth groesi nhw gyda yn brydiau Cymreig ni sydd gyda ni mor bwysig ar hyd y wlad. Ydy, ni wedi bod trwy gyda le bore yn dilyn y brydiau mynydd Cymreig, ond mae'r hen yn wahanol iawn yn dynnu. Ydy, hollol, hollol wahanol. Lyca ni ddim rhoi un o'r hen falle ar ben mynydd yn ganol llan ddewi brefi. Mae yna bwrpas i bob bryd yn dosau. Mae yna bwrpas i bobeth ar ddiwedd y dydd, ond mae yna le i bob un o'r brydiau yma gyda ni ar draws Cymru. A mae pob un mor bwysig a'i gilydd wrth bod ni'n mynd ymlaen ar gyfer y dyfodol. Er mwyn wneud yn siŵr fod yn pobl ni ar draws Cymru yn cael yr safon gore ar ei platiau nid yn unig ar y disil, ond yn ystod yr wthnos yn gyfan gwbl. A fan hyn ar ni'n gweld cig yng ngwir ystyr y gair yn dynnu? Bendant. Mae'r siap ar yr oed yma yn ffantastig. Um, Stim gas gweld dim un par yma, um, cael i dros 400 a hanner o bare yma um, o fewn y sied yma yn cystadlu lenni, a dros dim gas gweld dim un ohonyn o felly. Um, mae fe'n fraint mawr i fod yn sefyll yma yn edrych arno nhw, a mae'r beirniad dwi'n siŵr yn cael penderfyniad eitha anodd ar hyn o bryd. O, di gleu. Achos, mae mae bwysau'r esgwydd... We're actually into the uh, Dutch textual class that we did feature earlier on. And uh, we'll get another good look at these very good lambs. Perhaps, um, perhaps they think that these are the ones that are going to go all the way, perhaps, aren't they? Interesting to see, though, that there's quite a few previous winners actually exhibiting, yes, there exhibiting is, to be here. Fair. And yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. we have mentioned before that it's uh, the start, really, of probably what we're going to see at the end of the competition. Isn't yes, it? it is. Perhaps a practice run, then, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. But um, no, they're, they're very good. There's a lot of exhibitors that are exhibiting in this class have come to the fore, but the Dutch tech is a breed now that is perhaps as we alluded to before not quite as strong uh, in numbers wise as the, of the texels and that obviously we've got the blue texel and everything coming along as well now haven't we absolutely and uh, just a bit of uh, information for you this year we have the highest ever entries with a record 471 pairs entered and uh, it's actually the uh, Pewa Welsh mountain section that has the most with 139 pairs entered, entered and every section has seen an increase in numbers entered uh, with many winners from both uh, winter shows entered especially in the Bel- Beltec so they've been around the other shows as well so it bodes well for a good show standard and since 2006 the winner has actually come from the continental or the butcher's weight section which is what we were chatting about uh, Gerald and uh, the Dutch Texel uh, which we're looking at here took the championship in 2017 and 18 with the Beltex uh, winning in 2019 and doing the same again in 2021 well, as I alluded to before then in terms of uh, actual pure breed or crossbreed lambs like these like they are say supposedly sired by a, a Dutch Texel or whatever but I mean there's such a little variation in between the breeds isn't there so there we go. The halls, as we saw before, going forward, and they took the Supreme Championship last year. The halls have been very strong right throughout the competition with like butcher's weights and beltex and blue texels on many, many occasions before. And as I alluded to before, these are probably a pair that they have high aspirations of coming forward. Ar draws y farchnad yn gorfod gwneud hynny yn anffodus. Ac mi fydd yna godiad yn y prysiau o fyth mae pobl yn talu wrth fynd i'w archfarchnad oedd. Ond gweithio... Do we state it before then, um, about different types of styles of judges and that, and as we say, Mr Lancaster here is really conf- con- 
much say concentrating on the back ends or they say the money end of the of the land perhaps isn't it yes more so than the loin on the land perhaps isn't it whereas the cattle has been more emphasis on the loin on the perhaps line, yes. the back end but still in it got to have a good back and a good back on on the lambs and well i suppose yeah. whenever you talk about sort of the prime lamb you always talk about the leg of lamb don't you That's so quite right yeah, yeah. yes I can do that drouse, um, and nobody likes a skinny leg, as they say, <laughs> is it? <they? laughs> yeah. oh, very, very well turned out lambs and a good, a good, oh, the good time, advertisement for the, the breeding. The time that day. goes into them is, is unbelievable and a fantastic show of quality animals here at the Winter Fair this year again. And another fantastic show of livestock here in the cattle ring. And we now move on to the perhaps the dangerous end of the breed, shall we say, or what shall we call them, Ems, in the class I, I, one you're heifer You're going to have to stop calling them dangerous. <laughs> well, yeah, now. You're doing yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, not the uh, first class or first section of the heifer side by a limousine bull. Absolutely, then. and so, uh, and they split this up as we stated in in weight, in from four four two to five hundred kilos. What we've seen so far in the previous judging, by the look of it, Mr. Willis has gone probably for the heavier end he of has. every section. Yes, you're right. So he perhaps he's has. thinking of a butcher then and buying a largish animal to produce as much meat as possible. Absolutely, you want you want an animal that's going to give you uh, plenty of meat to sell. <laughs> a great uh, number of entries in this class. I think it does sort of in reflect on the dominance of the Limbazan really as a, as a, as a terminal bull. Uh, in, 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 in cattle I the think cattle the, the, this whole section then has been split in several uh, there's 42, 42 heifers okay. sired by a limousine bull forward in this particular show that's a tremendous number oh, of entries is really indeed, isn't it yes. 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 if they all had 42 in each section we'd be here for a while we were talking before the names in terms of the heifer numbers are exceed the uh, exceed the steer numbers, and they're a lot um, sweeter, aren't they? A lot nicer, like uh, not as rough and as robust as a steer, are they? I'd, I think as well as when they get maturer as well. I, yeah. I'm not sure whether that be reflected in the baby beef as well. Oh, yes, um, baby, baby beef then is the, is the shop window, and obviously there's a lot of baby beef here, which we'll feature tomorrow morning, uh, hoping to catch the eye of, of, say, the prospective showmen that are out here today. And if there's a successful showman out here today and makes a little bit of money tomorrow, then he'll be able to put it back into the future showing for next year, like. Absolutely. That's a great shot there now, isn't it? Quality, to be fair. And, um, Mr Willis is still going strong. He's been at it for a long time and now he's got, like I say, several sections of these limousine heifers to get through. I'm, I'm hoping he's had managed to get a sandwich or something in while he's been judging between classes or something because it's, it's been a long day for him out there. Yes, indeed. It's good to see the exhibitors there enjoying themselves and they've been doing the uh, red card be being given out there now to number 47 which is uh, from Blair Dufton with Pepsi I haven't seen a heifer called Pepsi before I think we used to have a cat called Pepsi but, <laughs> but not a heifer <laughs> yeah really sweet heifer there isn't she yes indeed to be fair good start to the limousine section to get through in Absolutely. first class for a first prize and uh, a, a goodie bag given, being given out uh, yeah, right. as well for this section Limousines, limousine society leaving no stone unturned <laughs> but I think we don't know a great deal uh, Ems in terms of Pepsi there would be one of the lightest efforts in this particular section of 468. That's quite interesting, actually. Yeah, actually, yeah, very yeah. interesting. Because yeah. uh, he has been uh, here and on the yes, on the side, more yeah. mature. But having said that, there ain't a great deal of difference. It's only 500 kilos is the heaviest, so she ain't too far behind, is she? Yeah. No. Lovely little heifer. Very sweet, very nice heifer. Show heifer. 
Maent o gig sy'n ar ni felaid yn cynyddu fi. Edrych chwn i'n mlaen felly at y dosbarthiad ei hefrod o darlun sydd ar y ffordd. Ond Siôn Eilir am y tro, diolch yn fawr i ti. Diolch yn fawr. Right, let's head over quickly before we uh, leave you for the news. We'll go to the horse ring and join Emma. Uh, Rachel, Roy. Thanks, Cara. So uh, we're back with the section Bs and we're on the Yearling Colt class now, which is 189. So we've had um, an initial pull in and trot out in hand. Eight entries in this, and I think we've got four forward so our judge Ileri Wynn Marshall e. Jenkins taking um, a final look at her four before she hands out her rosettes so obviously uh, Ileri uh, a ridden Welsh breed specialist so would have had and uh, all sections of the Welsh stud book and the saddle having qualified them for Hoyes herself. So um, my guess is obviously she would go for a pony that is most definitely going to, hopefully anyway, perform under saddle. So uh, big fronted free moving ponies would be my guess. So she is going to leave them as her initial well, pull by the look of it. So, Stewart is going to call the first pony forward, well, which is one, two, three, nine, and this is uh, the Williams family. Colt, Moyle Garnedd, Mabon, um, Colin Tibby showing the pony oh, so this will be in english well yes we, we, you know we, we can do we're not boys at the job we know what we're doing or we hope so <laughs> you've had a bit of success showing this family as well haven't you oh, absolutely absolu absolutely uh, this this won the royal welsh earlier in the year yearling colt class anyway and uh, he was uh, supreme at um, anglesey winter fair um, and he's had lots of wins this season so. and his father stad Drost, did a great deal um for you and the family Absolutely. Well, we won uh, we won the uh, the Cuddy with here, with Stadros back in I don't know six or seven years ago, I suppose, and that's as good as you can get with an in hand. You can't get any better than that. Well, congratulations. You must be tired. We've seen you running all morning. Is well, there more to come? I hope not. Yeah, <laughs> I'm Pop Lock. Deal. So Colin Tibby producing the winner there of our yearling section B Colt class, Moyle Garnet Marbon, as you. He's just told us successful pony winning the Royal Welsh yearling class earlier in the year and already been out this year supreme at Anglesey Winter Fair and reserve supreme at the West Yorkshire Welsh Pony and Cobb Association show. So we will um, see that pony back. A little bit later on. Right, let's get over to the sheep ring quickly and join Emma and Gerald. Thank you very much. Yes, we've, we're just getting the winners here of the Blue Texel pair of lambs and the winner there, 641, Chris Davis. And, uh, good to see the uh, Blue Texels here. They feature so heavily in the summer shows, don't they, Gerald? With oh, yes, a lot, a lot yeah. of entries. Very popular now. Any of your glitter on there, Emma? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure in this section there's some there yeah, somewhere. I'm sure. I'm sure. We'll find some, I'll have, yes. to have a word with this cameraman to get a little bit closer and have a look. <laughs> See presenting the prizes, Mr. Matthew Brown, the Dunbeer agent. Didn't have the job of judging, Mr. Lancaster, but he is the one that was actually awarding the prizes. It is, yes, but. Really, yeah, speechless to be honest with you, yes. Really didn't see that one coming, no. Wow, no. That's it. and it happened quite quickly there, didn't it? It did, yes, oh, I did. It's, uh, but really, like, very happy to have won a big class, to be honest, but uh, yeah, great show of sheep. And I must admire your trimming skills, they're amazing. Oh, it's very kind of you, but. How many sheep roughly do you trim in a year? Uh, good question. I've never counted it up, to be honest. Too many, I'm a, sure. A few. Yeah. <laughs> a few. Well, good luck to you later on. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Well, before we uh, leave you for the news headlines, um, as you can see, it's uh, quite busy here. The weather has been favourable, so let's get the latest updates on the weather forecast. And we've been uh, quite lucky so far because there have been a few scattered showers elsewhere, um, but these will disappear. And uh, the temperature has been around 8 degrees centigrade here. Uh, at the showground in Llanelwedd. It's going to be a clear and dry night tonight, and the temperature, the lowest temperature, will be about one degree centigrade tonight. Tomorrow, another dry day. There might be a few clouds around, but it'll be dry in the temperature between 10 and 6 degrees centigrade. And looking uh, further ahead, Wednesday, once again, a dry day. Be a mixture of cloudy and clear skies and the average temperature between 9 and 8 degrees centigrade. Well, there we are. There's plenty to come uh, for the rest of the afternoon, of course. We are going to be with you here live on uh, S4C until 4 o'clock. And, of course, uh, you can get involved by uh, following us on all the uh, social media outlets, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. But uh, we will be leaving you now for the uh, news headlines. But, of course, uh, we will be back for another two hours live from the Winter Fair here on S4C. Now, da ma tri o bobl wedi cael eu harestio ar ôl dod o hyd i gyrff dau fapu mewn tŷ ym Hennebon Tarogwr. Cafodd y gwasanaeth y bris ei galw i'r safle ar stad Wild Mill, ychydig cyn 8 o'r gloch nos Sadwrn, lle cafodd 2.37 a 4.7 oed, ac un dynes 9 ar hugen oed ei harestio ar amheuaeth o geli genedigaeth plentyn. Dywedodd arweinydd y Cyngor Sir Hugh David fod yr achos yn un trasig, mae heddlu de Cymru yn parhau efo i ymchwiliadau. Mae'r awdurdodau yn Tsieina yn ceisio taweli protestiadau yn erbyn y cyfyngiadau Covid yno. Yn Shanghai, mae'r heddlu wedi gosod rhwystrau ar hyd un o'r priffyrdd ac mae nifer o bobl wedi cael eu harestio. Mae maint y gwrthystiadau yn ddigynsail yn ystod arweinyddiaeth Xi Jinping, gyda rhai yn galw bellach arno i ymddu swyddo. Mae penawdau cyson ynglyn â methiannau'r gwasanaeth iechyd yng Ngogledd Cymru yn tan seilio hyder cleifion yn ei weidio ysbryd staff ac yn gweithygu problemau'r acutio sydd eisoes yn difrifol yn ôl un o benaethiad bwrdd iechyd prifysgol Betsy Cadwaladr. Ond yn ôl cyfarwyddwr meddygol y bwrdd, Dr Nick Leons, mae'r mwyafrif o gleifion yn derbyn gofal da ac effeithiol. 
Fe enillodd y nyrs Mara Jones Owen wobr gan y bwrdd iechyd am fynd y milltir ychwanegol, ond mae hi'n cydnabod bod penawdau negyddol yn gallu digaloni staff. Cos stori strwg mae rhywun yn nap ddo glywad bob amser, so mae yn nis bod rhywun yn bod yna beth da yn digwydd yn yr NHS efe, bod yna bobl yn fodlon mynd y filltir extra yna. Dwi'n ffrindio fel lot o nyrsys, a maen nhw yn mynd yn... Dach fod o ddiddiau o'n ar ei dei off, a bydd sadd o'n ddysyl yn gwbod, bod rhywun yn strygglo, a bod eisiau mynd i'r cartra. Cos maen nhw'n dan i'n ffrindio fel teulu, dan eisiau gwneud y gorad yna pan mae rhywun yn nyrsio i gael wneud, a mae rhywun yn gweithio oriau chawnegol, ar ôl, oriau gwaith, yn dod i fe o'n y weekends. Ac ar ddiwrnod cyntaf, ffai reian llanelwedd, mae ffermwyr y dofetnod yng Nghymru yn cael eu hanog i fod ar eu gwyliadwraeth am fliw adar. Ar ôl i lywodraeth Cymru gyhoeddi y byddai mesurau newydd yn dod i rym i atal lledeiniad yr haint. Mae cadeirydd bwrdd dofetnod yr Undeb, Richard Williams, yn rhybuddio am amseroedd heriol iawn i'r sector. O'r ail o ragfyr, bydd yn rhaid i adar caeth yng Nghymru gael eu cadw dan do, neu gwahanu rhag adar gwyll. A dyna'r cyfan am Pnawma, cofiwch am ein prif raglen ni am hanner awr wedi saith, ond am y tro felly diolch am eich cwmni, pnawn da iawn i chi. Welcome back to the uh, Royal Welsh Showground here at uh, Llanelwedd. We're going to be with you live for the next two hours. We're off air at four o'clock and it's uh, great to have your company. It's uh, a busy afternoon, as you can see in the background, and the weather so far has been uh, very favourable indeed. Well, coming up... Later this afternoon, we'll be back in the cattle ring to see more of the heifer classes. Thomas 
and of course we'll also be uh, visiting uh, the sheep ring and we'll look forward to the Welsh Ponies Championship and the Welsh Part Breed classes and of course uh, tomorrow we'll be looking forward to the sales and we've been asking you in uh, your opinion uh, what uh, will be the selling price for the uh, supreme champion in the uh, cattle section? Well, it looks as if the majority of you now have changed your mind. Uh, the most popular price is between £5,000 and £7,499. But uh, we also asked you uh, what you thought would be the uh, selling price for the Supreme Champion in the sheep section. Well, it's between £600 and £899 at the moment. So if you want to uh, give your opinion, well, then get in touch via our social media outlets, which is uh, Facebook, Twitter and uh, Instagram. And here's another one for you. Which section will win the Supreme Horse Championship? The Welsh Mountain Ponies, the Welsh Ponies, the Welsh Ponies Cob Type or the Welsh Cobs? Right, Nia's going to uh, look at the floral art uh, section, I think. But in the meantime, we'll head uh, off to the cattle ring and we'll join Emma and Gerald. Thank you very much, uh, Gareth. Yes, we're back with the Limousans and we're now in the sex second section of the uh, heifer sired by a Limousan. Yes, and as we've alluded to many times before, we move up a, a few kilos and we have eight representatives in this and they're from 512 to 546. So we're quite compact in our way. 30 close, kilos is as yeah. close as we've been to anything all day, haven't we? What, what's 30 kilos between friends ah, like in it, you know? No, no, no. At five pound a kilo, it's a bit though, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, limousine sired, yeah, as we've said, uh, I'm not allowed to say dangerous, so I've got to choose my, for, <laughs> choose my word correctly. Um, yeah. A very, very attractive class and middleweight heifers like these stand a very good chance of featuring at the end and uh, some very nice animals on show and as I stated before then it's nice to see that the judge has to work for his living here because every animal is very good and consistent in there and these limousine people don't pay this entry money if they don't think they stand a good chance so there is some nice heifers on show. Black and red, predominantly black and red. Say, yeah. You must be reading my mind, Gerald, because yeah. I was going to say more of a variation in colours in this class than more, more red. Out and all solid colours? Yes, yes. Although you will see quite a little bit of the, the Belgian blue influence in the dam along the way, and you might see a white stripe or a light, or that that, yeah, that just a little drone bit of roan under that the you belly. like, yes, coming through, yes. And a white belly is very, and especially in a black animal, it's, it's quite, quite common. Quite eye-catching, yeah, yes. Quite and common, yeah, yeah. 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 I've seen a couple of animals with just a, like uh, a white mark down their face along or something. Uh, there was a uh, Charlery bull then many many years ago called Westertown Gem that you had, had uh, even though he was white and obviously very good Charlery, he used to throw a lot of animals then out of crossbred cattle with a white stripe down the middle of their back right, and a white okay. tail. Oh, right, and now that's we used to see that quite a few years ago in yeah. Shogad. That was very eye catching then, yes. but that's gone then. Obviously you know but yeah, uh, yeah. that was very attractive to look yes, at then you know yes yeah a, a longhorn bull will do the same but yes, maybe not called. quite the same <laughs> same shape as the, not, as the not Charlotte. quite probably no. not no no, no. Yeah. So we're under shape on uh, some of the heifers in, in, in this class then very strong heifer here now and our end of the, of the class then. I don't think he's made any kind of selection yet. Working very close to the to the grandstand there. I don't know, perhaps he's asking for help from the, all the crowd, perhaps. <laughs> and there we go now then. He is having a little move around there. 
that have acquired a few factions actually. I From first position were they, to third position. Were they bought in in the Or maybe in they were just stopped I don't, in line I'm not and now sure. He's, he's I'm not sure. Changed his mind as maybe they were actually walking around perhaps and now he's be first hands on perhaps. And, uh, maybe he's had a chat with uh, this morning's uh, a planchet <laughs> and <laughs> we're having a bit of keeping it a bit more exciting. There we go. Coming in well if it is first place then we have number seventy six. Blair and Anderson. Betty. She's 525 kilos. About, uh, about the middle ground Not of the weight. Not the lower then. end, lower no. end probably, yeah. A lot of these particular show animals and that would have a tremendous killing out percentage, mind. Oh, yes, especially you know, like... Well, in high 60s, even up to 70% killing out percentage. So, you know, even if it's killed at 70%, like, you should be 360, 70 kilos dead. So, you know, it would be a uh, good target weight. Although, he's changed his mind again. Again, yeah, Betty's gone down to just... Oh, yeah, sure, to review place. the situation. Oh, and, oh, and he's uh, yeah. made a final decision. Here we go, number 49, which is a cheap thrill from David from, from David Wright. She's going up just a section in 542. So we will feature cheap thrill later on, or tomorrow actually. I have to wait till then to see Ems if she's done any good. <laughs> well, Celeri is uh, on the uh, Farming and Wildlife Advisory Group uh, stall with uh, Glenda Thomas, who is uh, a director, and uh, the Farming and Wildlife advisory group uh, was uh, first established uh, as a charity in the 1960s by a group of forward-thinking farmers who saw that the environment was an important part of a successful farming business. Uh, the organization helps farmers understand the uh, environmental value of their land and uh, make the most of the uh, the uh, agri-environment options that uh, are available. It uh, represents a, uh, a coming together of the uh, local farming and uh, wildlife advisory groups which continue to serve the farming community up and down the country. And uh, so that is just asking what are the major causes of concern at the moment? Well, there has been a massive increase in uh, the price of uh, fertilizer, especially. <coughs> and um, one of the biggest projects that they have currently is uh, the Pennell Partnership, which is a, a farmer-led community initiative uh, to bring together people and nature in the long term to, to improve the biodiversity by improving and linking habitats. Um, obviously tackle the effects of uh, climate change and uh, encourage uh, rural uh, resilience and uh, economic uh, activity and um, engage residents to take positive steps to improve uh, their surroundings for their own health and well-being and that of future generations uh, by volunteering and uh, joining in community activities. Uh, the junior uh, Echo Guardians uh, at school are planting trees, learning how big data can make maps for modelling change and finding out what species live uh, in a particular area. 
Så mae angen meddwl am bob un darn o'r gwneud. Mae'n dipyn bach o strategic planning i ddechrau cyn awni planning. Os dyna beth sy'n angen, a mae eisiau hefyd yn drwch ar rheolaeth y coed sy'n gennon ni. O, diogle'n da, gwych. Wel, dwi'n ôl i gofyn mwy o gwestiynau mae'n siŵr am y ffarm nes mae'n. Diolch o galo ni. Diolch o mawr. Iawn. Hwyl o chi am wan. Diolch o mawr. Mae'n asylwau baith Saesnag. English commentary is available on this program, depending on your device. Either press the red button or use the audio selection option. Any problems, contact the SVC viewers hotline and the details are on the screen. SVDREC and other fire area in Bow. Right, let's head to, to the horse ring and we'll join Rachel Thomas. Thanks, Gareth. So we're um, again still with the section B's. So this time we've got the Union Philly or Gelding class. Um, 11 entries this time. Again, a nice quality bunch of ponies. Uh, maybe not quantity wise, but definitely all of excellent quality. I think out of the 11, possibly six or seven forward. Yeah, six or seven. So, um, again, Ileri win. Marshall Jenkins taking a final look around. Well, and uh, I hope we'll be, yeah, it looks like we have got a result and they're going to stand as they are. So there's a green pony you can see in shot there, number 1250, and it's Joe Parry from Denbisha. And this is uh, IR Vienna uh, by Ross on Adonis and out of IR Titania. So three pony shot there, 1241. Uh, uh, this pony belongs to Sandy Anderson, Thistledown Apple of the Eye, by Thistledown Arctic Air, out of Thornbury, Iruan. So we'll have this no, Sorry, this interview's in Welsh. So we'll just try and get a shot of the other ponies because I'm afraid we haven't got the results for you. Well, three on there. <laughs> but uh, we did just catch the Sandy Anderson's pony was in second there. And uh, as I'm sure many of you will know, Sandy Anderson, the brainchild of Grandstand Media, who run Horse of the Year show. And obviously, I'm sure there will be plenty of these ponies once they come out under saddle will be destined for hoys. So... Um, there we are. Ayarth Vienna, the um, winning section B Yearl in Philly at this year's Winter Fair. And we'll see her a little later on when we come back for the championship.
Welcome back to the uh, Royal Welsh Showground here in San Elwedd. And uh, we're going to be heading straight to the sheep ring. So we'll join Emma and Gerald once again. Thank you very much, Kenneth. Yes, uh, so now we are going back to uh, a very strong class of Beltex lambs here, Gerald. Yes, indeed. Uh, continental influence. Uh, we watch quite a lot. And Mr Lancaster here then is, has his work cut out in this class, I can assure you. And as you alluded to before, plenty of past winners and people that have done very, very well in the showing ring with these particular breed of sheep. And it is a strong class. We are 13, 14 actually entries in this class. That's, that's a good number of entries for these uh, purebred uh, lambs. Some tremendous strong pay there, 6.59. So James Daniel. And as you alluded to before, there's two lambs in every class, every section, sorry. So you have to feel every one and you have to assess whether they are a pair or not a pair. And perhaps us, uh, to the naked eye, we think they're the perfect pair, but could be a significant difference in the way that each individual lamb will handle. Some very uh, heavy lambs in this class, so we're, we're going from the lightest at 70 and a half kilos for the pair all the way up to 108 aye, aye, aye. for the pair. So that's 54, 54 and half, kilos 35 is 20 kilos yeah. difference. Yeah. There's very little lamb inside the lamb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very strong pair there now. Very tightly clipped as well. Well, the belt text, though, they have this um, uh, not a very long fleece in the start, so they and, and quite a strong wool, so they yeah. it can take uh, take trimming. Then and, uh, there's yeah. some exceptional good showmen in this job that can make yeah. these lambs look exceptionally well. Very strong bone on that near side pair there for a belt The belt is a breed that has obviously improved their locomotion and they were able to keep up with the, they, they came on the scene just a bit. Very, very much like the Belgian, Belgian blues, blues you were saying that, earlier. That, yes, that they needed to uh, improve their locomotion because uh, um, they were very stapley like then. They were like yes. as if they curved backs on them, but they, they well, had. Just so much meat in the back That's end, wasn't right, it? It yeah, was yeah. very hard for them to hold hold it up hold almost. It, yeah. The legs weren't good; they weren't designed to to walk with no. it. But they have, to be fair to the breed, society has improved them. And uh, these Beltex rams that we see as these terminal sizes are for sale now, are, yes, they do the job. And a lot of people that are, that um, that are keeping mule flocks, obviously, they mule you is a large you, so they want a ram that'll fetch the size back, but also improve the conformation on the mule you, isn't yes, it? So yes. yeah. The, the the Beltexes have become a very strong contender in in the sheep world. Basically, it would suit everybody now, wouldn't it? You know, from some hillmen use Beltex to improve the conformation of their lambs from their yeah. Welsh shoes. And, and they're, they're pretty easy lambing as yes. well. The lambs are quite small when they're born, but they do grow and put the meat on then as right. they grow. So we see the whole family there in the centre that we've featured earlier on. I do believe they can throw in the Dutch taxel, but these are exceptional good pair of lambs looking from here. And the standard looks exceptional in this oh, class they, do. they almost look like they've been polished, this, these lambs. <laughs> they? They, they, their wool is that <laughs> well, so nicely clipped. Every strand is in its place, you should Absolutely. say. Absolutely, yes. Yeah, not a hair out of place, is it? No. <laughs> no. But, um, very nice. We did say that the holes, I'd imagine they have several um, entries over the different classes. Yes, they feature probably in all the texels and the uh, several, like the blue texels, yeah. the, the Dutch texels, the standard texel, to to these, to the belt tex, to the butcher's weight. So they've got a lot of crossbred use as well, which would produce these exceptional quality, well muscled lambs, wouldn't they? So uh, and they ain't going to come all the way down from Carlisle with one pair, are they? No, no, no. Got to make they'd be very confident if they were coming down with one pair. Yeah. No, they're going to put the have several chances, obviously 
Cymru throughout the show. Mr Lancaster has got his work cut out because as we see he's got two lines at the moment but I don't think that has any bearing on the thing so we'll have to come back in a while to see what the final decision and final outcome of this particular yes. class will be. Absolutely. Well, <coughs> we join Ian. She's just referring quickly to the chef team, Jamie Tully, who you can see in the background. Uh, but she's joined now by uh, Owen Roberts from Meats Promotion Wales. And uh, this uh, fair is a, a shop window for them where they meet with producers, buyers, and it's uh, a very important platform for us to be able to promote um, meat from Wales. Uh, we, we do uh, quite a bit of research, um, the standard of the meat, to make sure that it's constant uh, compared to the standards worldwide. And uh, we've discovered quite a few interesting facts that uh, Welsh lamb uh, fed on grass is uh, far more better for you than uh, lamb that hasn't. And we've also, uh, talking about the promotion that we do uh, in Britain and uh, abroad, and the Welsh lamb has started uh, to be sold in the United States. <laughs> and he is just asking whether or not the uh, United States footballers have been eating our Welsh lamb. Um, but uh, we have now the uh, the rights to uh, sell Welsh lamb uh, in the States and we've started the marketing process. And uh, the World Cup is... Uh, very useful to us because now on a on a world stage people are familiar with, with wales as a country it's a it, it's a, tr a trying times at the moment obviously with the uh, cost of living crisis and welsh lamb could be quite expensive but as owen points out uh, food prices across the board have increased um, and what we're offering is, uh, with perhaps cheaper cuts of meat, uh, we're offering different kinds of recipes that you can uh, use uh, to uh, produce a meal. Uh, so there's a lot we can do. And, uh, and we, of course, uh, uh, we uh, encourage people to keep uh, healthy red meat, as it were, as part of their... Um, eating habits and of course it's nice to see uh, a chef of Jamie Tully standard uh, here at the uh, at the Winter Fair he's, uh, he's a Bill Wells uh, a lad of, of course uh, he's been spending quite a, a bit of time working abroad on the, the soup yachts and, and what have you but we're very glad and we appreciate the fact that he's um, taken a bit of time to come uh, and join us here at the uh, Winter Fair. Hello. How are you? Yes, I'm fine. Yeah. Um, sorry to interrupt, but yeah. can you just tell us what you're cooking at the moment? Uh, yeah, so we're doing um, a Welsh can of lamb with uh, orzo, like a spiced orzo risotto. Um, we've like coconut milk, co coriander, cumin. And then, um, yeah, it's basically it. So it's, it's a real nice, simple dish. So why have you chosen the cannon of lamb? Because that's quite an, that's an expensive cut, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it is an expensive cut, but it's like it's just a nice way to show off the best of lamb, really. It's a real nice like lean piece, and needs like quite a lot of attention when you cook it. So. Um, so how are you cooking it? What, what's it do you so cook I'm it? cooking this in the pan all the way. So I'm going to real nice sear on it, and then I'm going to finish it in the pan like with some butter and just keep it like almost like a steak basically. Any oil in that pan beforehand? Uh, I boiled the meat just before it went in. Um, yeah, so I'm going to put some butter in now in a second. Once I've got that sear in, because that sear then traps all that juices inside, which is really important. All right. You've travelled the world, and we mentioned earlier you've yeah. worked on these super yachts with yeah, right, yeah. billionaires. And yeah. um, how does Welsh lamb, Welsh meats, Welsh red meats compare to what you've found abroad? Oh, it's amazing. It is it, like Welsh lamb is the best in the world. Like, no, no question about it. I've worked in like Middle East where lamb is quite a big product of theirs, yeah. but like ours are like much bigger, fatter. You can tell they've grazed on proper grass, like Welsh water and That's stuff. That's what was saying. Now yeah. yeah, the taste. Yeah, it really is so important. Um, where they, they just, I think we're just lucky with the countryside and sort of all this natural all elements and stuff that goes into it. I guess. 
So yeah. And there's a Bill Swells boy. Nice yeah. to be home. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. It's I'll, good. Leave, I'll leave you to it. It smells absolutely lovely. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. 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 All right. Peter said when he got the Jamie tell you, man, I'm and cooking your mars on the hubby key camera. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, that was a chef, Jamie Tully, who's uh, from Billswells originally. Well, let's head over back to the uh, cattle ring and join Emma and Gerald again. Thank you, Gareth. Yes, we're uh, just rejoining Class 903 now for the Limers and Syed Heifers. Up by weight again, uh, that's how they split these sections up, and we are now from 556 five, to 614. Step a little bit stronger again. Yes, yes. Once, you, once you're heading over the over the 600 kilos, you, you, you're heading towards a finished animal, then, aren't you? I would think so. Yes. Yeah. Sassy girl. Strong exhibitors in this business. Edward's brothers uh, actually have three animals in this particular section. So, uh, wow. It's quite a, oh dear. a thing to bring one good animal here, but to, to bring three is quite an achievement, isn't it? There's some posh names on here, but there's also a happy ending. All one right, of these okay. are called. Sassy Girl, Posh Spice, Baby Guinness, Lady Luck, Lady Jane, Good Ear. Oh, I don't know. Where does Good Ear come from? I don't know. What's the significance of that? I, I, I'm just wondering, did they leave the bad ear at home? Oh, I, I, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Willis is still going strong. Oh. Having a long day. There we go. Edward's brothers have come forward with number 66, Baby Guinness. Went a shot for there. 596 kilos. Um, yeah, towards the yeah, target. heavier end. What do we do, coat on that animal? I'm not taking too much trimming of that end. Just on the underside and on the top line. Long coat, long coat for a, Maybe for a limousine cross, yeah. Great, her great great granny might have been a Welsh black or something. Well, well, <laughs> quite well be, yes, quite well be. Yeah. Nice is it my them. eyes appearing then? Is she jet black or is she just uh, say off colour slightly? Not too sure. I think my eyes are going a little bit now watching all these cattle all day. Adam, I hear baby Guinness, a Kaya do add slightly. I'll be a I'm a fire, I hear well, Tilly. A hundred shot and Peter de Garmo, that's a yeah. I'm not a spark creep, Kaya and I. I'm a yard and I. Nothing in with you, I'm a shock. A dim shock of a thing. Tremendous back end on that particular animal, isn't it? Very well fleshed heifer indeed. Yeah. Looks good over the top, to be fair. Very, very good. Very wide over the top, isn't yes. he? Yes. I think as you're heading towards the, the heavier weights, they're a bit more filled out. Yeah, mature. Uh, throughout is the word, mature, isn't it? yes, yes. <laughs> Uh, well, we'll see um, Baby Guinness later on in the competition tomorrow in the final lineup of Heifer's first prize winners. It'll go forward to the overall Heifer champion of the show.
Welcome back. On this, the first day of this year's Winter Fair, and we're heading straight for the sheep ring and join Emma and Gerald. Yes, thank you, uh, Gareth. We're back in the Beltex class, class 100. And the judge there still casting a very close eye over these lambs, Gerald. Yes, he's made a selection forward to the, say, the top end of his, of his class now. And uh, stand second position there. And we see the halls in second position at the moment. Yeah. Had a, already had a first year today yes, indeed, now, so yes. uh, yeah, yeah. I wonder, I wonder if Mr. Lancaster will award them a second or. The first pair seem to be, I can't see a number on them to check up their weights, but they don't seem to be quite as big as the no, pair in second no. there. Not quite as heavy, no. No. But a very nice pair. Oh, there's good confirmation lambs in them uh, all the way across the line, to be fair. Oh, yes. Oh, no, they are yeah, going yeah, to the change halls, them round. Yeah, he's got the halls round again. Good pair of lambs there, uh, Powerful, aren't they? Very yes. Pair of lambs, yeah. Very even as well. Yes, ah, indeed, uh, yes, it is the red rosette yeah. for them. Well done to them. Increasing their chances of success as they go on with every uh, red, red in card they Increasing win. their chances of success. Yeah, good choice. That. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. yeah. Well, so we well turned out. I don't know oh. who's been doing all the hard work with them, but... Years after year, they're doing it, to be fair. Yeah. Very consistent readers and Absolutely. producing good lambs. And Mind him as we get him fed up. But talking to him. <laughs> That's right, yep. Beltex lambs. That was quite close, mind. It seemed to be. <laughs> <laughs> you Make smoked sweat a bit. <laughs> yeah. How is it? How were the nerves? Uh, they were getting there then. Because <laughs> you've done this how many years? Yeah, the nerves are still there, and if the nerves aren't there, it's not a good thing. I don't think you have to be nervous to do your best. But how many years have you been doing this? Oh. I don't know. Long it is since we over twenty since we started. Didn't we? Yeah. I was ta- I was talking to John Hall, of course, the famous father, and he was telling me he's been at it twenty five years. Right. Yeah, that would be right. We showed uh, live <laughs> and you were there. Yep. Yep. So. Oh, no, How many brilliant. of these have you got? Six pairs today. That's it. Mm. Well, congratulations, dear. Well done, you. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank you. Well, don't forget that uh, we have a competition where you can win uh, a voucher worth £100 to spend at your local butcher shop. And then all you've got to do is watch the video and then answer this question. What was the sale price for last year's Supreme uh, Champion in the Cattle Section at auction? 5200 6400 or £8,000. All the rules and all the information you require is available on our website, s4c.com slash fire af right let's head over to the uh, horse ring and join rachel thanks gareth and we're now on the section b championship um, so hopefully we'll get a shot uh, just got david oliver talking to uh, Peter Jones of Men I Stud, so just see the bees in the background. So, our judge for today, Aleri Wynn, Marshall Jenkins from Talabont, Ceredigion, just taking a final look at her prize winners. Uh, nice entries in B, in the Bs today, our biggest class was 20 in the Gelding, uh, or Philly Forward class, so that was really good to see. Yeah, Peter. So he's standing in front of us there. The cream pony. Twelve fifty. Year in Philly. Eighth Vienna. And one two two five there. The late till pony. Kerry Powells. Uncle Denny Silo. One, two, four, one in front of us there was Sandy Anderson's thistle down apple of the eye. So we've got a decision, and it looks like it's going to the Yearling Philly. Colin them in an aisle. 
ar ebol blwydd yn mynd ar geowob ar wellong gyfeich ar y mawr. So there we are, and then we've got the Yearling Coat coming in reserve. So champion section B, the Yearling Philly takes it. So this is Joe Parry's IR Vienna, uh, Cream Philly by Rosson. Adonis. And we've got our Yearling Colt winner in reserve. And this is the Moilgarnet Studs, Moilgarnet Mabon. And this Colt is by Moilgarnet Stadros and out of Moilgarnet Mimosa. So we've got the, the ladies winning the day here today and beating the, uh, the Colts. But nice classes of bees today all um really nice quality ponies that well joe are all edited off but this is going to be in welsh i'm afraid uh nah with nos and dolan and this morning at the practice i didn't know how many yeah didn't want to well but you need to so this filly's had a few um, outings this year by the look of it, but culminating in a winter fair championship. Along with the Moil Garnith Colt also being um, very successful, being a summer show winner here as well. So two quality ponies there. So Ayath Vienna, Joe Parry from Denbyshire taking the Section B Championship. Well, the near mark and he'll hell go and ruin. I can borrow the ear to pick up Korea. Well, there we are. Welcome back. We are featuring the hounds in the row our show winter fair here. Very important part of Welsh heritage and Welsh country life, Rachel. Yeah, definitely. Um, I've, I have been outside and had a quick look, and entries were down this year, which is a bit sad, really. Um, um, not that many Welsh hunts represented this year. Not quite sure why. Um, no, we obviously, still, we still have a few. We could yeah. come out and hunt, come out and hunt, come out and hunt, come and hunt, Blind View, Urban and Tawi, Llanunin, and the Radnus hunt. So there's several exhibitors available here, but yeah, probably only fetch a couple of hounds each then, haven't they? Just a bit of a shame, really. Some of the sort of hunts from the Vale of the Glamorgan share areas didn't sort of come up um, to show hounds. The unfortunate scenario of the keeping these hound packs going and that though is a financial yeah, uh, very, very, big, very expensive financial bearing yeah. on it and now obviously hunting is banned so like yeah. farmers contributing towards the upkeep of the of the of the packs as was of years ago are getting no reward so it's only basically the diehard hound followers yeah. that are willing to contribute to the uh, to the hunt yeah. and yes obviously we've got a lot of people riding people do contribute yeah. to us and keep it going but it's it has struggled in the past uh, yeah definitely so has struggled now. lately then sorry but uh, but obviously most of the hunts offer a fall and stock service and um, certainly in our areas we offer fallen stock services so the farmers do get a benefit in that way as obviously you know we do price wise a lot of the hunts try and help their farmers by giving them that service to pick up dead oh, I agree. fallen yes, live, yes, yes, livestock yes, yes. I agree with that, um, yes. Which but it was a, it was a, a broad spectrum right across the whole of the of the country when the hunting was was legal and that and it did serve in lots of other ways and like yeah. uh, blacksmiths and people like that yeah, were, a lot of were, were kept in work with keeping people on on the who were riding horses and following these hounds as well. So it, you know, even though they, this the trail hunting now, I mean these hounds would have inevitably been put down had we not been able to trail hunt. So. As you said, it's still giving people a living. Comment, Hounds yes. are still yes, going. Yes, 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 yes. Um, and a lot of people these days just enjoy riding two hounds and they're just happy to hunt um, false drags which is great and they just enjoy cross-country riding but obviously there's the upkeep
upkeep of them to enjoy that that sport but it's still nice to see these animals still out there and people still showing them to keep the breed alive really that's quite right yeah quite right you know they are lovely animals i mean as some of these are showing they're not too keen on being here really <laughs> they're not quite used to standing in front of the camera and no, very often are they no i don't think they really like them. oh that no, one's but off they respect that's what it is about they're a, they're a park animal and they respect their handlers and their owners and the guys that are in charge of these homes when they have 20 30 40 couple out they can control them tremendous. yeah it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah just mad. loose but having said that you know here on a lead in a yeah, in a shed <laughs> in front of a lot of Odd looking people and sort of different not, surrounds. It. It's it's just alien to them, too isn't happy it? At all. It's alien, that's what it is, isn't it? Yeah. But there we got an English there were English hound classes and Welsh hound classes and um obviously some people watching might not know, but that's a Welsh hound in front of us. I'd call them the Welsh cobs of the hound world. That's good, right? Yeah. Hairier, fluffier. But they're, and more built, they're built to they're built to run over the rough terrain of the rocks and and that of which we yeah. have here in Wales and a good foundation and strong legs and and obviously a hard coat to withstand the 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 briars and the rough rough foliage that they run through yeah. as well. So. Yeah. Uh, all over, whereas the English hound then perhaps run on cleaner ground and yeah. more open space and with no no hills and that to climb up, is it? No. So, uh, and you'd, you'd cla- I'd class those as the, as the thoroughbred version of the hounds. Well, there you go, the Welsh has become champion oh, of the World Welsh Winter Fair. So, uh, uh, he is actually, re- I can't see, is it a dog? <laughs> yeah, uh, I can't. Oh, is it a bitch? I can't see underneath. But um, it's a nice hound, actually. But anyway, really at least strong. we featured him. Yeah, we're still giving them, um, you know, their year at the Winter Fair. Nice to see.
Welcome back to the uh, Royal Welsh Showground at Clanelwedd. Uh, we're into our, almost into our final hour of broadcasting live from this year's Winter Fair. We're heading to the Cattle Ring and join Emma and Gerald. Yeah, we're in the final section of the heifer sired by a limousine bull and obviously we've increased the weight every time we've gone to this M and we've gone to the highest weights of all now. Absolutely, and, and it's starting to show now, isn't it, that the more, bit more strength, yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. But having said that, we've had some tight-knit classes in terms of about only 30 kilos between. There's 100 kilos between the, the uh, first heifer, the lightest heifer and the heaviest heifer in this section. Wow, that, that's a fair old difference, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. Actually topped in 700 now, the heaviest yeah. heifer in, in this particular section, number 60. 60 yeah. twice is 700 and 18 kilos. That's a fair old heifer there now, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Yes. yes, indeed. Yeah. But to go back to the member of the short horn back a while ago was 680 something kilos, so she isn't too far behind, was no, she? No, no, when you think about it, not at all. But anyway, there's some good good animals in this section, and Mr. Willis has been working hard. He's at the top, top end there at the moment, uh, Mr. David Bishop. And here we are, yeah, he's gone for the cards. Fleur. Mm-hmm. 662 kilos. Very attractive black heifer. David Bishop. Perhaps not much so uh, associated with the cattle ring, more in the Beltex and Texel and Lamb Ring. But anyway, he's turned his hand to cattle here and has been successful. Look that big really doesn't it? she must she be a very, very, solid, very heifer, solid heifer very solid yes yeah. Yeah. very well meted heifer yes oh. tremendous turnout for the uh, limousine sired heifer class Richard Wright in second position there. We've seen Richard Wright come to the fore here in the show beforehand, haven't we? So we will see Fleur up against all the other numerous winners that we've seen in the heifer section all day in the final tomorrow. So we'll have to wait till tomorrow to see how she progresses any further. Well, <clears throat> yeah, I mentioned earlier on that she was going to uh, visit the floral art exhibition here at the Winter Fair, and she's uh, joined by uh, Kevin Davis, and uh, it's always a spectacular sight, uh, Emma, when, when you visit. I know you visited there earlier on today. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a great uh, area to visit. Uh, there really is some beautiful exhibits in there. And the uh, overall theme, they always choose the theme for the uh, overall floral show. And it's changing times this year. So they, it, uh, all of the titles will be sort of connected to that theme in, in different ways then. I think this particular section is the magic of Christmas. Uh, yes, and uh, Delith Price there, they mentioned, taking first pies. And uh, she really is a stalwart of the uh, floral art here, taking many, many prizes. Ah, uh, yes, Donald Morgan then again, here every year, um, Exhibiting and as it's saying here, he's trying to interpret the t- uh, the the shape of the uh, Christmas tree there. So something a very very uh, different then. And they've interpreted in different different ways, as you mentioned. They're all different shapes, different yes. sizes, different colour and, schemes. Uh, uh, yes, exactly. And of course, there's only one individual who makes a decision, and that's the individual that's judging this particular section. But as Kevin said there, everybody has got their own opinions as to yes. uh, what attracts them, as it were. Ah, yes. All right, this is, this is based on a Victorian theme. Yes, Vic, Vic, it doesn't Vic, necessarily have to be anything to do with Christmas, no. but 
Yes, so the, the, of course, Victoriania is the, the title. So, of course, the fruit, the pineapple then was quite an exotic, uh, an oddity. And, of course, the hot houses that they had, they invented in the Victorian times to grow these exotic fruits then. So it's a little nod then uh, uh, to them then, uh, that then. And it's a table centrepiece that they've had to put together, I believe. Yes, yeah. so with the table centrepiece then, it will have to be viewed from all around, like some of the uh, the classes, you just view it from the front, but being a table centre, of course, you have people sat around your ta table, so it has to be viewed and it will be judged from all around. Yeah, and that one, the third place there, there um, with the uh, very, very heavy with berries and the fez and feathers. <laughs> so this one, um, the nod to the Victoria, Victorian area uh, is with the props then, with those um, silver vases then, which they would have used at the time then to um, show uh, yeah, another pineapple in that one. So these are very tall then for, for, for table centres. But you need the, a large table to, to accommodate those. Yes, yes. Um, uh, but they've done very, very well to these. Um, if you, yes, that one, it's not not necessarily Christmassy, mm. but of course, changing times is the overall theme. So uh, we've now gone to the table. These 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 exhibits are absolutely something to behold, and they are tabletop um, arrangements. And quite expensive, I'd imagine, to put together as well. There's a lot, a lot of plant material in them. Um, they do allow um, for you to use some artificial or dried materials as well. Ah, now then, this one's something a bit different this year. It's a pew end, so uh, an arrangement to be hung um, to go on your pew end in, in a church or chapel yeah. then. So with a, with a Christmas theme then. Pew ends you normally associate with weddings yes. or those kind of um, celebrations. But this one then, um, a Christmas theme. And Louise Fino taking first place and again... Uh, coming back every year. This one's a very modern mm. uh, take on it. I really like So that's something different. And dried fruit, fruits. Yes, uh, yes. You can see they're quite prominent. And dried fruits are really popular at Christmas yes, time, are, time yes. again. This one's, this one's really nice. Mm. A lovely swag, yes. beautifully designed. Yeah. Crosses are rather too, too dominant. dominant. Yeah. So it's taking your eye away from the floor. Plant material should dominate. So if you've got something else there that takes your eye away from the uh, from the plant material, then it's to go down. Ah, now then this one is just explaining. There's a treble cleft. I don't think it really comes through across on the screen, but there's no. a treble cleft through it. But I really like that with the holly and the ivy, which is Christmassy again, and very natural plant material in, in that one. And with a treble clef, of course, you mentioned the holly and the ivy, you associated with of Christmas course. carols as well. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> right, back to the sheep ring, back to Emma and Gerald. No, Thank you very much. Yes, indeed, we're back to the into the sheep ring. A small class here of just three competitors, and it is class 102A, a one pair of badger faced Texel Dabin Cop lambs. Dassen Cop lambs, yes. They've just, uh, I think they had their uh, own classes at the Royal Welsh this year for the first time. Um, so. A newer breed that's been introduced, a continental breed again, and a, and a type of the of uh, Texel. And as you see in the odd Welsh breed, sometimes you get a throw back to the badger face uh, markings. And I think then that's what happens with the Texels, but they've kept them then and bred them as a uh, pure breed. Yes, indeed, Burn. Obviously, there is influence. There is a fair bit of muslin on these. Oh, on these yes. Lambs. Like they're, yes. They're somewhere, where would you say? Somewhere between the Texel and the Beltex. Somewhere in there, aren't they? Then uh, yes. fine boned, fine boned animal with this with this nice, attractive colour in, if that's what you like. And, we, we, we got a bit of sparkle as well, uh, oh, Gerald. Oh, no. 
Christmas is coming. Oh, no, then. Um, but they're quite smart as well. We, yes, we, they are very attractive. We, we, can't we won't see, see their heads today, but they do have the badger face markings, the same as your Torwe, uh, your, as your Torwens. Oh, now then, we're having a bit of a... Oh, crash. Has he pulled them forward, even yes, though uh, I think he there's does. only three? I think he said basically <laughs> one, two, three, and... Uh, well, as he stands at the moment, the first would be at the other end, so there's a local couple of people there in Hugh and Kate Williams from Bank Farm Tally. There with a pair of lambs. Very attractive uh, looking sheep, I have to say. Francis is from Abergorlech. In the middle there. Stands at the moment, the first prize is on the top end. Oh, he has made his uh, decision. And, uh, the winner there, Envis Williams. Envis Williams. Been exhibiting here for many, many years. And a lovely pair of lambs there. And it's the first time that this breed has had their own class at the uh, at the Winter Fair, so she is their their first winner.
Welcome back to the uh, Royal Welsh Showground. This is the opening day of the two-day winter fair here in San Elwedd, and we're going to the uh, horse ring next, and we'll join Rachel. Thanks, Gareth. So um, we've now moved on to the Welsh part bread section. And uh, we've got David Oliver there just having a chat with Han and Barr about the part breads. And obviously, as you can see in the background there, um, really good entry, actually. Uh, this is the Philly Fowl class. Um, sorry, Colt Philly or Geldin Fowl in the part breads. They all go in together here. 30 entries. That's a great entry. Um, no, obviously, you get a huge um, variation of types and sizes in the part bread class, as obviously the only requirement is that they have a minimum of 12.5% Welsh blood, so therefore they can be any height type colour, shape, size um, and obviously crossed with anything at all um, in the summer show obviously they do split the part breads into um, over 14-2 and under 14-2 but um, obviously in the young stock shows and here they would be all in together so We've got our judge here today, and we'll give you a little bit of background. And it's Lisa Barsoom Allen, and she's from Henley on Thames. Um, she um, met her husband through the horses as he had an interest in breeding, and she herself has been breeding for the last 20 years under the Leora prefix. Um, again, she used to show Welsh breeds herself, and her mum actually used to ride out in South Africa at the local um, training yards, used to ride racehorses. And uh, Lisa herself has worked for a pharmaceutical company, but at the minute is concentrating on being a mum to her 17th month old little girl. So Lisa herself has been the Section C ridden judge at the Royal Welsh uh, in 2022, and now we've got her back here at the Winter Fair. Um, she was first started with the Welsh Pony and Cobb panel 10 years ago, and she's also on the NPS and BSPS panel. Now, she likes animals to be mannerly, as obviously being a rider herself. Ultimately, she would like these ponies to go on and come out under saddle, so temperament is uh, paramount for her. Um, she would like to see plenty of bone, plenty of feather and substance, but with quality as well. And funnily enough, it has always been her ambition to judge at the Royal Welsh. And there we are, she's done the two in the same year, summer show and winter. So we've just seen the initial go around I can't quite count how many we've got forward but as I said it was an entry of 30 which I think is brilliant so just looking through the catalogue here we've got so many different breeds here and from what I see you see the part bred classes and you could have the same ponies judged by four different judges and have four different results. Obviously, different judges are biased towards different types, what they like and dislike. So, um, not an easy class to win, in my opinion. And obviously, we've got a few um, colours in here, eligible for the coloured classes later in the day. And jump back over to the cattle ring now so I'll hand you over to someone that knows a lot more about them than I do Mr Willis is diligently still working in the cattle section I can't quite see which it is at the moment but we have gone into uh, sections then that are uh, pure cattle by a native bull Homebred heifer, sorry, by a native bull. We've got uh, homebred heifer, born and bred and fed on the exhibitor's holding. 
So several classes have been introduced into the into the show to cater for everybody. Yes, quite interesting, the different mix of uh, breeds we've got coming up there. Number 85. So she's a... Uh, uh, Sired by, by a purebred a native bull, so, yeah, so unfortunately we don't from have From a um, Galloway bull. So something a little bit different. Nice to see these yes, indeed. minority breeds being represented at the at the Winter Fair in some way or another, isn't it? She is owned by Steve O'Kane, who is the professional handler, as I stated, and Mike Rowlands, who he exhibits cattle for, so Mini. She's come to the fore and she's 658 kilos. Yeah. Just uh, mentioning on the uh, Welsh commentary there that she's uh, won, won a class at the English Winter Fair as well. Oh, oh, good depth of body on that uh, yes, on that effort. It'll be interesting to find out what cow she's type of cow she's actually <laughs> that, out of. That's the bit they're not telling well, us, Jared. There we go. Yeah, so <laughs> it's up to me and you to decipher that, isn't it? <laughs> well, black or Nate um, Galloway bull will be red colour. Um, yeah. Yes. Oh no, there is no, black. Black, black yeah, Galloway. Yeah, 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 so, yeah, yeah, black. Um, Probably a little bit of Belgian blue in there somewhere, surely, isn't it? Jump the fence into some well. Belgian blue. <laughs> As you never know. You never know. But then again, if maybe uh, breeding from purebred heifers, giving them an easy calving bull for their first calf or yes, something, and then producing a tremendous yes, calf that is eligible for these uh, for these classes as well. So, and 92 there, taking second place uh, with her breeding. Uh, not actually stated in the in the in the class. Melanie, your name is. She's 616 kilos. There's a lot of weight on the hoof for these particular crossbred animals. So it does say Sire is uh, Gear Fury, but I'm not sure. I think that's probably the name name of the bull then. And, and indeed, the the winner's uh, mother then was a Limousin Cross. Well, we're back with the uh, floral art exhibition, and uh, Nia this time is uh, looking at the. Uh, well, the category that's been, uh, I think they call it the sparkle. Is yes, it? This, is, this is for um, a, a spiral, a hanging, oh, spiral, spirals, rather, yes. yes, a hanging exhibit. So this is actually something new that they have there. And not by hanging, as in like we saw the pewens before, they were hung on the wall. So this is actually um, hung free, not freestanding, of course, because it's being hanging. But do you know what I mean? It's, it's not actually against Attached the wall. Attached to anything as, no. as per se. Yeah, no, yeah. no, 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 no. So this one now, is kind of like a, a spiral going round in a circle, if you know what I mean. Rather, I think some of the others now are like a spiral coming down then. But, but that's what's interesting about these classes, is, is the interpretation and how each exhibitor interprets them. That's quite one-dimensional, though, isn't it, to some respect? Yes, yes, or yes. Although it's got a, looks a little bit sort of strictly there with the, with the glit in all. But, uh, yes. It, it hasn't got the, maybe the depth. No, nah, that's... Uh, yeah, that's women, yeah. So this this one's kind of like a little one winter wonderland with it with the silvers. Yeah, so Donald Morgan is explaining there. The top there's a bit heavy, so it's actually taking away your eye away from the effect of the spiral coming down. And there's kind of a seaside uh, theme to that particular one with the seashells, yes. obviously. And this is the one that's taken the, the, the first prize. Yes, a very, very simple in some ways, but it's got the rhythm of that um, spiral coming down and also the um, textures. You've got some like bits of dried pampas there and some asparagus fern, but with the orchids then just dotted down it. 
So the exhibit should not be more than 70 centimetres in diameter, but height and length unlimited. Well, this is much bigger than the three that we've seen yes, previously. Yes, so this is actually Donald's exhibit, and I, I really like this one. For me, it's a lot more eye-catching eye than the other one, and it's just a little bit more to it, and it's all dried material then. Uh, I really like the textures and the colours in it, and it's just... It's a bit more impactful. Yeah. But like you said before, it's all in the judge's yes, eye, yes, isn't it? Yes, yeah, yeah. But it seems to me, an untrained eye, as it were, obviously, that there seems to be a lot more work involved in this particular one than the yes, previous ones yes. that we've seen. Yes, but then sometimes it's what's effective, not necessarily yeah. what's most... Again, I, I, I like this one. It's got that nice spiral in it. Ah, yes, yes. So what he's mentioning there is those large flowers uh, are too out of scale to the other elements in it. And also it's got... Yeah, but a lovely, nice shape and movement. Quite Christmassy, that one, then. But there wasn't an actual theme. You know, it was all about the spiral. So any of the decorations was, was up to you, really. Yeah. Ah, this one's moving over now to the horticultural section. And uh, these are all created by children, which is fantastic. Mm. So There's two categories, from what I understand. Yes. One was... Uh, Aged between four and but eleven no. as individuals. Yes, that's it. Yes. And then the other categories: four to eleven-year-old school entries. Yes. That's it. Yes. And as he's just saying, uh, Donald's just mentioning now, it's nice to get the youngsters into uh, competing in it, and uh, it's all uh, very nice. And it's a miniature winter garden, as he said. Yeah. Yeah, it's just saying it. Uh, it's just like you're looking out of your window over the garden on a on a crisp, frosty morning. Yes, and yet he's just picking up on the fact that you know they've gone to a great deal of detail, haven't they? Well, absolutely. <coughs> It's one thing with, with, with children, they've got little fingers, so they, they can do all the fiddly bits <laughs> yeah. then. <laughs> and there we go, I think we're just having a quick look now over the school section then. Mm -hmm. so. And they're all really, really lovely. <laughs> ah, right. Cowbridge yeah. School, I think. Yes. They mentioned they had, uh, have had a great deal of success uh, at the Winter Fair here. For a moment, then I, th I thought they were referring to Pontvine in the Gwain Valley. Oh, I, I, I don't know. No, it is. It is. No, you are right. You are right. Because I was thinking there's no school right there. But <laughs> yes, no. But it's so nice to see uh, the children's exhibits here.
Welcome back to the uh, Royal Welsh, and we're in the cattle ring uh, with the young handlers competition. So let's uh, rejoin Gerald and Emma. Yeah, the future of the show ring, hopefully. Young handlers get just the same in the summer shows, get asked questions and and what they do, how they feed, how, what Absolutely. they present them like and what they've done to get the cattle to this particular stage. And it's uh, lovely to see a uh, young man joining uh, Ivan on the commentary there. It... <laughs> Such a character, just asking uh, where he got his uh, jacket from. Well, he was just reminding, I think I recognise that tie. It's the one you wore when we were here in the summer show. Oh. Oh. And actually, it's his grandfather's tie who passed away a few years ago. And he would be delighted to see Thomas wearing his tie on the television and being a co-commentator with Ivan. And as Ivan just said, hopefully in maybe two years' time we'll be seeing him in the ring as well. Well, it's nice, nice to see a young person commentating on 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 the young young handlers. Oh, it's nice to see a young person commenting and the young people competing, isn't it? It's all in part and parcel of the future of the show, isn't it? Yeah. Would you help me that way after? I would try help you get out of the dark and you saw you get out of the pillar. So nice to see a good turnout of uh, youngsters here for the uh, young handlers competition. And it's not the judge then, not necessarily judging the animals in this class then, but the proficiency of the handlers and not just how they handle the animal, but also their knowledge about that animal. So he will, and we can see it here now, he's asking questions. He'll be asking them things like about their breeding, their age, um, what they've been fed and have they been to the shows and things like that. A lovely animal there being exhibited and in total control of that. Married Hughes there just being introduced as this uh, this handler. This will be split in age groups. Uh, um, I believe this is the younger generation of the young handlers and maybe then they'll go for an overall champion at the end. Should be the youngest of should be the youngest of the exhibitors yep. and we'll see the senior young farmers coming forward in the second section. Like you said, it's nothing to do with the actual animal, it's on the presentation and how they have no. presented the animal for the judge and how they behave in the ring and how them young handlers can make that animal better to be able to catch the judge's eye because that's what it's all about and it would be very unfair if it was on the actual animal wouldn't it oh yes 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 anyway we'll have to come back and have a look to see which young farmer has been successful thanks Evan Gerald right let's go over quickly to the uh, horse ring and join Rachel thanks Gareth so back up with part breads now and uh, still on the foal class as I said earlier Foals aren't split in the winter fair by uh, sex or size, so we've got everything in here. Foals to mature over 14-2, under 14-2, colts and fillies. And as we said earlier, a huge selection of types and sizes. Um, you you know, we've got coloureds here. Obviously, they've got double hander because they can stay and also compete in the coloured classes. Uh, there may be some in here that can also compete as a sport horse, but that's tomorrow, so obviously they're going to have to stay overnight. And then, as you can see, as long as they're 12.5% Welsh blood, they are eligible for these classes. Got 
um, as I said, so many different types with um, coloured plated animals, sometimes in here, but for me personally, Welsh part reds, um, you wouldn't see as many of the hunter types in your Welsh part bred classes, maybe hunter ponies. Most definitely, well, but not as many of your hunter horses. So we've got a result here. Another good strong class with an entry of 30. Total entries in the section is 60. So uh, we've got a winner here, and it's number 1045. And it is Richard Burge with his own Tamric Born to Dance. So I think this is going to be in English. All sorts of types. So, yeah, absolutely chuffed Tell to us a little bit about the foal. We bred her. Um, it's the first coloured foal by our stallion, um, which he won at the summer show here as a two-year-old a few years back. Um, so it's the first homebred one that's won in Wales. So, oh, well, congratulations. Really, a, really a great achievement. Well Thank done. Thank you. So Richard Burge there just um, saying how delighted he is with his homebred coming all the way from West Sussex to win in the Royal Welsh. That... Uh, it really shows that the Royal Welsh does have so much appeal from people all over the UK and indeed uh, the world. So um, by their own stallion, a coloured Welsh partbred stallion there. And in that class, 1072 was second, which was... And we've jumped over back with... Well, Teleri is uh, with David Jones, who... Uh, is representing the Ivor Williams Trailers Company and have, has been with the company for about seven years, so he he's familiar with the with the trailers. And as Teleri says, this is probably the trailer, the big livestock trailer behind her, is uh, one of the most popular ones. And uh, I have to be honest, I've been stuck behind one or two of them uh, in the past. And then uh, also being displayed here at the Winter Fair is the uh, flat bed, which uh, has a, a variety of uh, uses. A lot of builders make use of the flat bed, uh, so it's not just uh, they just don't sell them uh, to uh, to farmers. And then uh, further along is the smaller. Uh, livestock trailer and uh, as David is explaining it's probably an ideal kind of trailer to bring down with you uh, to the winter fair and of course it's far easier to uh, to drive I suppose and uh, on, on, on a windy day, but now we move on to something that is uh, probably something that's not synonymous with, with the company. It's their first piece of machinery that they've launched. They've launched a couple of, uh, couple of months ago. It's the, um, the log splitter. It's not something that people would associate with uh, Ivor Williams as a company. It's something that's yeah. brand new for us as a company and it's nice to be able to come to a, a, a show like the Winter Fair with uh, a, a new piece of equipment, as it were. And apparently a lot of people have shown a great deal of interest in it. Yeah, it'll uh, split softwood, hardwood, so there's quite a, a variety of uh, uses with this uh, new log splitter. So TM3 are here? <laughs> well, do we met do we met hanging on the not of it and uh yeah, could you well, well to Larry just asking David if he himself could make use of the splitter, but uh, the answer was plain and simple, not at the moment.
Welcome back to our coverage of the uh, Winter Fair here at the Royal Well Show. Our time is slowly coming to an end, but uh, we're going to go over quickly to the cattle ring. Ivan, obviously, there with Thomas Bulk, who's obviously enjoying himself here as a pundit on the television in the Young Handlers competition. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ivan said you should be in school. I said no, I prefer a day off today. Thank you very much. <laughs> but we did hear our lead to the new chief executive saying earlier yep. uh, in the day that um, there's about a thousand school yes, children because yes. this is one of the only events where it coincides with the school term, and, that, and that's a great thing. Oh, it is absolutely because it, it is educational. We've mentioned, I don't know how many times today, it's about uh, the promotion and education of you know our farm produce from gate to plate, uh, and you know that encompasses so many parts of uh, of education, uh, you know, from from science, nutrition, and you know promotion, advertising. Yeah, it's absolutely. It's a you know, you could say it's a career strip almost, couldn't you? You know, so educational for so many young people. So not really a day off at all, I'd say. <laughs> and it's good for the uh, youngsters to see other younger people that showing animals and yeah, having success. Yeah, so yeah. if they see them having success, they pass the dad, mum. Can I ever go with this? And yeah, hold a lot of benefits actually, wouldn't it? Though? Now, previously, when we visited the Young Handlers competition, they were stationary. Yes. Obviously, the judge was asking them particular questions. Now, this is a different element, I suppose, to the competition. Absolutely, and, and an important part of it is like how they show that animal around the ring. Are they in control of the animal? Are they showing the animal off to the uh, the best to its highest potential so uh, really important part of the young handling experience. well in fact it's probably most important part of the, of the of the whole scenario because they can actually show that they can control this animal when it is actually mobile yes making an animal just stand there and holding its head up and making his legs in the correct position well that's fine but this time now they have to go around and then they stop and then they look address the animal and put his feet in the correct position and show hold his head up for the judge to assess the animal to the best of its ability and also don't take your eyes off the judge because he is watching and you think he's not but he is watching you all the time and I suppose that's a, a, another important element is is to be aware that you're being watched all the time and being judged at the same time as well that's quite right you can't, you can't switch off for a second Doing a lovely job. And none of them, they're, they're watching the judge the whole time. Because if that judge looks at you, you want to be seen, to be paying attention and catching his eye. Actually, I've been fortunate enough to judge a couple of young handler competitions myself, and it's quite uh, quite enthralling when you're asking this young competitor questions and whatever, and he's got the answer out of his mouth before you've actually finished the question. <laughs> <laughs> I was lucky enough to judge Gwynne show this year and some of the co younger competitors they were so enthusiastic it was incredible and obviously we're on a far bigger stage here than in, in front of thousands of people but they are keen and but, it's, it's just fantastic nice thing to, to handle well, oh, it's it? fantastic to handle it yes and as I say the concentration level and the downside of this the all downside of this is in, in my opinion like I, I've, I've voiced my opinion on this in many times there's a winner in every section but I do believe that all competitors that are, are in in second, third, and fourth, all deserve say the same same scenario. A winner is a winner, but you know it's, it's very unfair if there was eight to ten in this class and they were down in eighth position, isn't it? It isn't a very encouraging encouraging for them then. But still, it's a competition. First, second, third, and fourth, they'll be and. Uh, but they've been here and tried, and as you said, alluded to the, all the school children being about here. Well, they will be watching this with great interest. A, a little bit like the um, in the horticulture, we saw those little uh, winter garden exhibits. It's, it's a way to it, bring young people into the show and keep them competing and keep them coming back for many years to come. <laughs> Oh, and then it's Mr. Judge uh, oh, he's yeah. making them Decided, wait. Yeah. <laughs> we have uh, married Alu Hughes from Anglesey, travelled all the way down from Anglesey to receive first prize in this uh, first 
section of the young handlers. Tremendous achievement. And, and I think first prize goes for for a uh, commentator goes goes to him today as well. So we'll have to be careful, Em. He may be taking our job. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. I think I think he's better in front of the camera. Rather than <laughs> probably than the is. Yeah, you can't see his. Uh, I don't know what his charisma or yeah. whatever he's got. Yeah. yeah. Well, he, he managed just quickly asking uh, Thomas what he's got uh, set up for the rest of the day, and he's hoping to meet Chris, the chef. We'll see. Don't forget about the uh, competition. There's a, an opportunity for you to win £100, a voucher worth £100 to spend at your local butcher. All you have to do is uh, answer this question. Last year, in the sale... What was the price in the auction for Read All About It, who was the supreme champion in the cattle section? 5,200, 6,400 or 8,000 pounds. All the information uh, you require is on the website, s4c.com. Right, quickly, back to the sheep ring. Yes, tremendous classes here now in the butcher's weight sections. Like uh, like the cattle we've been following today, um, it's been split into different weight sections. Butcher's weight is where um, the overall winner has come from many times throughout the history of the show, but it doesn't mean to say that it's not it's not foregone conclusion and. Uh, and she well now, Robert West. Uh, we have some exceptional animals in view here. And, uh, see butchers' weights are can be of any breed. We see some uh, black lambs in there, so maybe they'll be uh, by a blue texel and could be by a uh, bell tex or could be by numerous different terminal sires, but out of different bred mothers, but it's a pair of lambs with all the meat in the right places and as quality lambs. And we have uh, lambs in this particular weight range. From about 80, 84 combined weight down to about 81, so they are very, very tight knit competition. Tight weight competition, then, so we haven't got a, a, a huge variation in the weight of one the bottom end lambs to the top end lambs. No, absolutely not, and uh, that's, that's it. When you, when you have bigger classes, and you, 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 you're going to have uh, tighter weight, weight yes, sections, indeed, yes. really. But it's just to make the, the judge's job just a little bit bit easier. But there's still big classes, really, and there there's still a lot, a, big, of, a lot of pairs fair, out there. Yeah. I'm a Robert, my then scan your David, my then Adrew, thy guy. Good confirmation, lambs right throughout, trim to perfection, and uh, and a really, really. These competitors work very, very hard to present the lambs to catch the eye of our judge. I'm going to have a new hobby, but I'm going to have a new I'm going to have a new hobby, and I'm going to have a new hobby, and I'm going to have a new hobby, and I'm going to have a new <laughs> so these lambs then in this weight category will be each would be around the 40 to 42 and a half kilos live. And I wonder if he's getting any closer to his uh, well, judge. We have a today. job to follow a lot of the judges, but mostly the judges today have started with the uh, first prize winners on our left. Mm. So uh, at this present moment then... Beautifully turned out these lambs, aren't they? Oh, now then, he's swapped them over as well. 
Asera Priestley sydd yn y safle cyntaf. Yeah. So, cur- currently we've got uh, Priestley and Garth. Robert West in our arms. And uh, Robert West in second place, coming up to second place at the minute. Oh, he has made a decision. And, uh, so, and it is indeed R and S, Garth and Priestley. Robert, Garth and Sarah Priestley. 41 kilos live average. Very nice pair of lambs. Oh, exceptionally good pair of lambs, yes, to be fair. As I alluded to many times before, to win an actual section is a oh, tremendous achievement absolutely. in the quality that is there, but yes. to go on and get a chance then to have in the overall championship of the show, tremendous sight to be able to see, isn't it? He's actually um, the second place in this class was last year's champion, Robert oh, West, then, oh, yes. Indeed, yeah. yes. Congratulations. Thank you very much. You were very close earlier on, but yeah. you've done it now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we're happy now. <laughs> you're sweating pints. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, we're sweating now. <laughs> you've had a tremendous season. Yeah. Tell us about the season you've just had. No, no, we've had a good season. Can't complain at all, really, so, yeah, no. Winning three main championships. Yeah. But yeah. this is the one you want? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it was. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> It'd be nice. <laughs> You're one step closer now. Yeah, yeah, we are. <laughs> We're back for chance. <laughs> this is your hobby, but from day to day, you, you scan yeah, sheep. And how many? Yeah. About 200,000 a year. We're going to New Zealand and whatnot, so... So, yeah, no, it keeps me busy. Yeah. So, yeah, subsidises this. <laughs> <laughs> and do you enjoy this? Yes, yeah, really enjoy it. <laughs> it's a great way to socialise, isn't it? Thank you very much, Adamawr. Thank you very much. Well, Dimachy, Dario Seres, Pedro. Well, earlier on, we uh, saw Chris Roberts with Nia looking for ingredients in the food hall. We've seen Thomas Bolch in the cattle ring with Ivan. And... Uh, <laughs> and I think Thomas is going to be Chris's new assistant. And he has just asked him, can you cook? And he said, no. I'm sure Chris can teach him a lesson or two. He said he was going to be cooking some lamb earlier in the day. And uh, obviously, the ribs have been cooking slowly. Thomas. <laughs> good. <laughs> and obviously, yeah, well done, Thomas is uh, <laughs> just suggesting perhaps that the lamb looks very well done, but a uh, bit of salt. Yeah. The old uh, Bartili rum. Oh, I just check in with uh, Thomas if he likes chilli or not, Nia wants to make sure that there's a serviette available because uh, Thomas has got a nice clean white shirt and a, a nice tie as well. Here we go, he's going to venture. Yes, a, a, that's a sensible suggestion, Chris. It might be a good a, a idea just to cut off a slice. And there's a... Yeah, that's easier to handle. <laughs> Is it safe to eat? Yes, indeed it is, Thomas. Let's see, what's the verdict? Good. 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 Yeah. Ten out of ten. Fair play, Thomas. Chris is very happy with that. Yes, obviously in the highlights programme later tonight at nine o'clock, both Chris and Thomas will be featuring uh, during that uh, broadcast. And Thomas saying, yes, he's enjoyed himself here this well, today, he'll be here tomorrow, of course, and um, he thinks that this year's winter fair is far better than last year. He's refused the second portion. <laughs> well, our time is up. We'll be back tomorrow, 10 o'clock in the morning. See you then.
Ond hawl bwyn iawn heddi. Mae'n wthnos newydd spon a dyma sydd ar y ffordd i chi heddiw. Yn gynta, dan ni'n dweud helo i'r criw lliwgar Timbo. Mae Nico a Rene eisiau antur, ond mae mor oedd. Dan ni ar y gamlas eto wedyn, gyda hiw y myleri yn yr awr iach. Mae yna elifant wedi...